Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 7, Leçon R. And I've been thinking that I could make maybe two videos, so it would be the first one regarding the verbs, okay? Uh, so just to give you quite many verbs, because at this level, at this stage, normally you should definitely try to learn as much or as many verbs as possible and then vocabulary is the same, okay? So we will start right now. Avoir, posséder. Okay, so for each verb, okay, I will first put the direct translation of the verb and then maybe, you know, one or two other verbs, okay. So it's uh, really important to just keep in mind that the first one is the direct translation, okay, so the first one that you should use in almost all the contexts, okay, but in some cases it's possible to use the other options depending on the context or the situation, okay, but then, so, avoir, posséder, être, aller, s'en aller, obtenir, recevoir, avoir, pouvoir, okay, one more time, avoir, posséder, être, Aller, s'en aller, obtenir, recevoir, avoir, pouvoir. Voir, regarder, venir, faire, fabriquer, savoir, connaître. Prendre, saisir. So let's repeat them one more time. Voir, regarder, venir, faire, fabriquer, savoir, connaître. So for these two verbs, I've been making one video, okay, that you can find if you use the search engine in uh, YouTube, okay, because, well, Really, they mean exactly the same thing, okay? But it's just a construction that you will have to uh, modify if you use savoir and then connaître, okay? Prendre, saisir. Penser, réfléchir. Mettre, placer. Vouloir, avoir envie de, désirer, dire, raconter, dire, déclarer. Okay? Penser, réfléchir, mettre, placer, vouloir, avoir envie de, Désirer, dire, raconter, dire, déclarer, donner, offrir, aimer bien, aimer, apprécier, regarder, travailler, Écrire, donner, offrir, aimer bien, aimer, apprécier, regarder, travailler, écrire, trouver, retrouver, jouer. Falloir, devoir, utiliser, courir, se précipiter, trouver, retrouver, jouer, falloir, devoir, utiliser, 
courir, se précipiter, apporter, amener, montrer, exposer, présenter, garder, retenir, conserver, aider, assister, épauler, placer, poster, mettre, apporter, amener, montrer, exposer, présenter, garder, retenir, conserver, aider, assister, épauler, placer, poster, mettre. So that's it for the first part of the verbs. Okay, so the next lesson will be exactly the same thing. Um, I mean the same thing, no, but the same concept, but other verbs. Okay, so the video can be found here. Okay, and then the all the others as well. And the website is here. Okay, have a great day. Bye bye. Les verbes, okay, so it will be the second part of the uh, the list of the verbs that I wanted to, to, to give you before the end of this unité set. Okay, and so let's start. Essayer, tenter. Okay, so just to repeat, if you didn't check that, uh, well, if you didn't see the, the first video, so I will put each time the first verb here, uh, it would be the direct translation of this verb okay so it will apply uh, well it will be the same meaning in almost all the contexts okay and then the second or third or maybe fourth option uh, it will be a translation that would be possible in some situations okay but not all okay but still essayer tenter demander interroger lire Appeler, partir, essayer, tenter, demander, interroger, lire, appeler, partir, entendre, ouïr, démarrer, commencer, Entamer, espérer, souhaiter, tourner, retourner, avoir besoin de, nécessité, entendre, ouïr, démarrer, commencer, entamer, espérer, souhaiter, Tourner, retourner, avoir besoin de, nécessité. Se sentir, croire que, ouvrir, arrêter, cesser, payer, régler, acheter. Se sentir, croire que, ouvrir, arrêter, cesser, payer, régler, acheter. Porter, transporter, marcher, se promener, rester, séjourner. Envoyer, expédier, rencontrer, retrouver, se réunir, porter, transporter, marcher, se promener, rester, séjourner, envoyer, expédier, rencontrer, Retrouver, 
se réunir, croire, souhaiter, désirer, couper, tailler, se souvenir, se rappeler, tomber, croire, souhaiter, désirer, couper, tailler, se souvenir, se rappeler, tomber. Manger, se restaurer, aimer, adorer, patienter, attendre, fermer, finir, terminer. Manger, se restaurer, Aimer, adorer, patienter, attendre, fermer, finir, terminer. Le verbe vouloir au conditionnel présent. Vouloir means want. Je voudrais, tu voudrais. Il voudrait, elle voudrait, nous voudrions, vous voudriez, il voudrait, elle voudrait. Je voudrais, tu voudrais, il voudrait, elle voudrait, nous voudrions, vous voudriez, il voudrait, elle voudrait. Le verbe « savoir » au conditionnel présent. « Savoir » means « to know ».« Je saurais »« Tu saurais »« Il saurait »« Elle saurait »« Nous saurions »« Vous sauriez »« Il saurait »« Elle saurait » Je saurais, tu saurais, il saurait, elle saurait, nous saurions, vous sauriez, il saurait, elle saurait. Le verbe partir au conditionnel présent. Partir means To leave. Je partirai, tu partirais, il partirait, elle partirait, nous partirions, vous partiriez, il partirait, elle partirait. Je partirai, tu partirais. Il partirait, elle partirait, nous partirions, vous partiriez, il partirait, elle partirait. Au café, so quite useful. Un serveur, une table, une terrasse de café. Un crème, un noir, un expresso. Ok, so one more time. Un serveur, une table, une terrasse de café, un crème, remember, accent grave, eh, eh, un crème, un noir, un expresso. Ok, remember, we've got this X here. Ex expresso. Ok. Un cappuccino, un chocolat chaud, un café glacé, un thé, un thé vert, un thé blanc. All right. So, un cappuccino, not really difficult to produce, 
un chocolat chaud. Remember, ch ch chaud, chocolat, and then final day not pronounced. Chaud, final day not pronounced. Un café glacé. Un thé, remember, H is not pronounced. Un thé vert, final thé not pronounced. Un thé vert. Un thé blanc, final C, not pronounced. Un thé blanc, ok? Un thé nature. Une tisane. Une camomille. Un thé au lait. Un thé au citron. Un thé glacé, un thé nature, une tisane, une camomille. So remember when we get this E and then double L, it goes like Y, Y. Mille, mille, camomille, une camomille, un thé au lait, final thé not pronounced, un thé au citron, un thé glacé. Un jus d'orange, un jus de pomme, un jus de tomate. All right. Un jus d'orange, un jus de pomme. In most of the cases, French people will pronounce it like un jus de pomme. D, d, jus de pomme. All right. And then same thing here, un jus de tomate. Okay, so you don't insist on the d. Jus de, jus de tomate. <laughs> I know it's quite difficult to produce, but still try. So, un jus d'orange, here it's not difficult. Un jus de pomme, un jus de tomate. Okay? Au restaurant. Okay, so let's start now. Une table, un verre, une assiette, une assiette plate, une assiette creuse. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Une table, un verre, une assiette, une assiette plate, une assiette creuse. Une assiette à dessert, une serviette, une fourchette, un couteau, une cuillère. So let's repeat them. Une assiette à dessert. Une serviette, une fourchette, un couteau, une cuillère. Une cuillère à soupe, un garçon, un menu, une carte des vins, à la carte. Une cuillère à soupe, un garçon. Remember when we get this CD beneath the C, it will give you the pronunciation S of C. So instead of K, as it should be with O. Okay? So, un garçon, un menu, une carte des vins, à la carte. Une addition, un reçu, un pourboire. Une addition, un reçu, un pourboire. Le poisson, so it will be a vocabulary lesson. Ok, so let's start now. Le thon. La dorade. La morue. Le saumon. Le bar. Let's repeat them. Le thon. Remember, H here is not pronounced. Le ton. La dorade. La morue. Final E uh, not pronounced. Le saumon. O-N, remember, nasal in your nose. Saumon. Le bar. Le merlan. La raie. La sardine. L'aigle fin. La limande de sol. Ok? So, le merlan, la raie, final E, not pronounced. La sardine, you don't insist on the final E, it only gives you the N. 
N pronunciation. Sardine. L'aigle fin. La limande sol. La sol. L'espadon. La truite. Le macro. La lotte. La sol. Same thing. Don't insist on the final E. Okay. It only gives you the L sound. Sol. L'espadon. O-N in your nose. Nasal. On. Espadon. La truite. Same thing here. Final E not pronounced. T. La truite. Le macro. So technically this K. Just pronounce it K. Mac. Macro. Macro. All right. And then... E, A, U, remember when you combine these three vowels, you get the sound O, macro, okay? And then la lotte, final E, not pronounced, lotte, t, t, lotte, okay? La lotte, all right? Les céréales. L'avoine, le blé, le maïs, le millet. So let's repeat them. L'avoine, remember, don't insist on the final E. L'avoine, le blé, here, accent aigu, et le maïs. So here you get this tréma, so maïs, maïs. And then you pronounce the final S, maïs. Le millet, here, I, and then double L, so I, I, millet. A T at the end, open. Millet. L'orge. Le quinoa. Le son. Let's repeat. L'orge. Le quinoa. Le son. L'imparfait. So we saw previously le passé composé. So this past tense. Uh, that we use quite often, and this is the second one, so l'imparfait. And in this video, we'll see together the first part, l'utilisation, so when do we use l'imparfait, okay, and then the second part will be la formation, so how do we build, how do, do we construct this uh, imparfait form, okay, so, but then let's focus now on l'utilisation, so when do we use l'imparfait, and then the first situation when we will use l'imparfait will be if you want to describe something in the past. Une description dans le passé. Okay, so if you want to describe something in the past, like in this example here, la pièce, the room, était, so that's the verb here, the verb is to be, okay, and it's the, uh, the imparfait form, était, grande, Big et sombre, dark. Okay, so in that case, you want to describe the room, then you should use l'imparfait. Second situation, une habitude dans le passé. So, um, a habit, something that you, you are used to do in the past, okay? And the example is, je partais, partir is to leave, okay? And it's the imparfait form here, le matin, the morning, à 8 heures. Okay, so in that case, you want to say that it's an habit, something that you do in the past, then you should use l'imparfait, okay? Other situation, when you will need to use l'imparfait, une répétition dans le passé, okay? So, répétition, you understand, something that repeats itself, dans le passé, the example here, nous allions tous les soirs au restaurant. Okay, so aller is to go tous les soirs, okay, so every evening, au restaurant, alright, so something that you do and that repeats itself, itself in the past. And then, if you want to say something that lasts, duré is to last, in the past, dans le passé, then, in that case, this uh, sentence is quite interesting because I've been, I wanted to, to make the difference between the use of the, the, the Imparfait here, okay, and then here, here you've got the passé composé form, all right. So, je regardais la télé, so la télévision, all right. So, in that case, you tend to use, of course, l'imparfait because it lasts <laughs> a while uh, when you watch TV. So, if it's a movie or something like that, quand, when, 
tu as appelé, ok? So, uh, appelé is to call, call on the phone, for instance, ok? So, in that case, you want to make the difference between something that happens and it's uh, an action, so, tu as appelé, ok? And then here, you use l'imparfait, well, because it lasts longer, ok? So, je regardais la télé quand tu as appelé, all right? And then, we've got another structure, so if you want to insist on the fact that something uh, it will last and then something uh, continues, then we've got this structure, être, so it's to be, être en train de, okay, and then you will put l'infinitive form after that, so the basic form, all right, so an example here as well, so I wanted to make the difference as well with, you know, between the, the, the um, passé composé form here, je n'ai pas répondu, répondre is to answer, okay, car, because, J'étais en train de faire mes devoirs, ok? So, faire mes devoirs, to do my homework, ok? And then, in that case, you use this structure, j'étais en train de, because you want to say that, well, it lasts, ok? It's quite long. It's not something that will take one minute or two minutes, but it's longer than that, ok? So, that's uh, the reason why we use this, j'étais en train de faire, so, était en train de, as we saw here. Okay, so you will have to use this verb être, okay, but then at the imparfait form, of course. Okay, so and then one thing that you should keep in mind is that être, so to be, croire, to believe, penser, to think, savoir, to know, are often and it's quite important, souvent, often, so it's not always, okay, because uh, you, it's not possible to say always, especially if you're talking about French grammar, okay, but uh, often you use them at uh, l'imparfait form, okay. Now, let's see how to construct uh, this imparfait, okay. So, I've been taking some verbs from, from the first group and then the second and the third group, okay? If you remember, we've got three groups of verbs in, uh, in French. So the first one, uh, regarder, so is to watch, okay? And then I've been putting this new form at the present. For a good reason, you will see why a bit later. So you should know the present form of regarder and it goes like nous Regardons, so that's the present form, nous regardons, okay. For the second group, I've been taking finir, finir, to finish, to end, okay. Same thing, you will put this new form at the present, nous finissons, okay. And then for the third group of verbs, I took prendre, prendre is to take, okay, and it goes like nous prenons. All right, so, nous regardons, nous finissons, nous prenons. So, the reason why I wanted you to see the new form is just because that's the form we will use to construct the imparfait. Okay, so, the thing will be to take away the ending of nous. And the ending of nous, it's O-N-S like you saw here, here, and here. So the idea is that this ending, you will take it away, okay? Then, that's the thing we will keep. Regarde, like that, without the ending for nous. Finis, without the ending for nous. And then prun, without the ending, okay? And, after that, you will add the endings for l'imparfait. And they will be like for je, a, i, s, for tu, a, i, s, for il or elle, a, i, t, for nous, i, o, n, s, for vous, i, e, z, and for il, elle, at the plural, a, i, e, n, t. All right, so now if you, uh, or if we talk about the pronunciation, um, the good thing is that this will be pronounced E, this will be pronounced E, obviously, because you write it the same way, this will be pronounced E as well. So, final S 
and final T are not pronounced and this is pronounced the same way. And the good news is that this form A, E, E, N, T is pronounced E as well. Okay, so we've got E here, E, E, and then E. Okay, so that's quite easy to produce. I mean, it's not normal, it's not uh, a big difficulty for the, the students to, 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 to make this E sound. Okay, and then for NU, it will be, so if you remember correctly, so final S is not pronounced here. Okay, and then this O, N, so it's a nasal and it goes in your nose and it goes like on. All right, so you don't hear any N, so it's really on, okay? When you add this E before, okay, you will get the Y, Y sound. So you get Yon, Yon, that's the full form, okay? Yon, and then Y here, okay? So E, 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 Yon, Y, E, all right? So now... Je regarde, and then E, so that's the full form that you, you will have, and then you will pronounce it, je regardais, all right? So if we had the example for finir, it was finis, remember this form that we got from the new form of the present, okay? So finis, and then you add E, je finissais. All right, and then the last verb we had was prendre, if I remember correctly, yes, and it was pren, okay, the form that we got when we took away this O-N-S ending from the present, okay, so pren, and then you add your ending, eh, je prenais, okay, so let's see how it goes for uh, all the forms, so je regardais, so it's uh, regarder to watch, tu regardais, il regardait, elle regardait, nous regardions, vous regardiez, il regardait, elle regardait. Okay, so remember, regardait, 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 and then as well, regardait. And after that, you've got this yon, as I said, regardions, and then yé, regardiez. All right? Let's see, finir now. Je finissais, tu finissais, il finissait, elle finissait, nous finissions, vous finissiez, il finissait, elle finissait. Okay, so same thing here. Have a look. Finissait, 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 same form. And then finissait here, same form. I mean phonetically, okay? And then ion, finition, and then finissiez. All right, and the last verb we had was to take, prendre. Je prenais, tu prenais, il prenait, elle prenait, nous prenions, vous preniez, il prenait, elle prenait. Okay, so remember that in that case you will have to really pronounce the E uh, like a uh, uh. prenais. All right, so same thing here, final S not pronounced. Je prenais, tu prenais, il prenait, final T not pronounced, so the same form, okay. And then, plural, as I said, prenez as well. Okay, and here, prenions, preniez. Okay? And then, of course, of course, avoir and être can be, in some cases, quite tricky. So that's the reason why um, we'll take a few minutes to watch or to have a look at them. The first one, avoir, and, well, it's not that tricky at all because it goes like that. J'avais, tu avais. Il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. So it is quite easy. Honestly, it is quite easy. Just try to remember, especially if you want to use it only orally, then it's quite easy because it's avait, 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 and avait, remember. Okay? So j'avais, final S not pronounced. Tu avais. Il avait, final T not pronounced. Nous avions, let's make this beautiful liaison here, nous avions. Okay, vous aviez, same thing here, a little liaison, ils avaient, elles avaient, okay, and then let's have a look at être, j'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, 
nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. Okay? Same thing, not that difficult at all, and especially if you want to pronounce it, it's not really difficult. J'étais, okay? Remember, here we've got an uh, accent aigu, so it goes like E, alright? J'étais, okay? Tu étais, il était, elle était. Nous étions, little liaison here to make it more beautiful. Nous étions, okay? Final S not pronounced, remember? Vous étiez, same thing here, little liaison. And then, ils étaient, liaison as well, elles étaient. Bonjour à tous, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 8, leçon F. And in this lesson, we'll work together on le passé composé et l'imparfait. So, I just introduced this imparfait form in the previous lesson. And we saw the passé composé, well, a long time ago in a way. No, still, um, the thing is that normally with students, uh, when they've got uh, these two forms, so after having introduced this imparfait form, it's usually quite tricky and difficult to know exactly when to use le passé composé and l'imparfait. Okay, so that's the reason why I thought it might be useful to just spend a few minutes with this video and just try to, to, to work a little bit on that and see if uh, things and um, uses are uh, okay with you. Okay, so let's start now. So in this video, first I will focus on l'imparfait, so when should we use l'imparfait, and then after that, le passé composé. Okay, so the first thing that will refresh will be l'imparfait. Okay, so l'imparfait, remember that you will use it when you want to describe something in the past, okay? So ex the example I took, la pièce était grande et sombre, okay? La pièce, the room, grande, big, sombre, dark, okay? So in that case, you use être, to be, all right? Uh, and then you use it at the imparfait form to make this description, okay? The second use will be something that you have so, une habitude, it's an habit or something that you are used to do, okay? So, une habitude dans le passé. So, the example, je partais le matin à 8 heures, okay? So, in that case, you want to insist on the fact that it's something that you tend to do every morning. Maybe, je partais le matin à 8 heures, okay? So, not so far from this habit uh, concept is... Uh, something that will repeat or that did repeat itself in the past, okay? Une répétition dans le passé. So if you want to express or to, uh, well, say something that repeats itself in the past, then in that case, you should use l'imparfait. The example, nous allions, okay? So aller, to go, tous les soirs, okay? So every evening, au restaurant, okay? So in that case, you should definitely use the imparfait form, okay? Nous allions tous les soirs au restaurant. All right? Another use would be une situation qui dure dans le passé. Dure is to last, okay? So in that case, I did write this sentence with the two forms. So here you've got the imparfait form and here you've got the passé composé form, okay? And then we tend to use both here just to make, well, clearly the difference of use. Of them. So the first one, je regardais, regardais is to watch, la télé, okay, so, je regardais la télé, quand, when, tu as appelé, appelé is to call, okay, on the phone, quand tu as appelé, alright, so we want here, with this sentence, here, to use the imparfait form, because it lasts in the past, okay, so when you watch TV, maybe it, it won't last one minute or two, but a bit longer than that, okay, and then tu as appelé, well, it's an action, something that doesn't take too long, if you compare it to the previous verb here, je regardais la télé, okay, so that's the reason why here, je regardais la télé, uh, will be used at the, 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 the imparfait form, because it lasts longer than the, the other one, okay, tu as appelé. All right, and then another structure that we can use as well if we want to insist on the fact that something lasts and something continue, okay? Pour insister sur la durée et continuité, then the structure is être en train de, and then you 
put your verb at the infinitive form here. So infinitive form is the basic form of the verb. Okay. So être. So that's the verb être that you should conjugate at the imparfait form. Okay. And then same thing here. I wanted to make the difference between the two. So here you've got this passé composé. Je n'ai pas répondu. So répondre to answer. Okay. Maybe someone was calling on the phone. Je n'ai pas répondu. Okay. Car, because, j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. Faire mes devoirs, to do my homework, okay? So, j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. So, in that case, you use this structure, so, être en train de, because you want to insist on the fact that, well, it takes a while to make them, okay? J'étais en train de faire mes devoirs, all right? Now, le passé composé. So, le passé composé, well, the first use, of course, of le passé composé, it's une action, an action, qui s'est passé, that took place, avant le moment présent. So, before the present moment, the, the example that we could have here, je suis en retard parce que j'ai marché trop lentement. Okay? And here, well, the first part here, je suis en retard, I am late. It's the present. Okay? And then you want to... Well, give the reason why. Parce que, because, j'ai marché, so marché is to walk, okay? And this is the imparfait form, okay? Trop lentement, too slowly, okay? Je suis en retard parce que j'ai marché trop lentement. Then, une action dans le passé qui a des limites temporelles, okay? So it's an action that took place in the past. All right, but then you've got some clear limits when it started or when it ended. Okay, and then the example here. Dimanche dernier, j'ai dormi toute la journée. Dormir is to sleep. Okay, so this is here the passé composé form. Toute la journée, all day long. Okay, so you've got clearly a limit. Toute la journée, you know exactly when it stopped. All right. Une action qui est terminée. Okay. So, clearly here, if you want to introduce your birth date, then je suis né, okay, so it was an action in a way, okay, but still it's finished, so, le 16 juin 1970, okay, je suis né, so that's the reason why here, you will use this verb naître, okay, je suis né le 16 juin 1970. Une histoire composée de plusieurs actions, okay, so if you've got several actions, okay, in a story, then normally you should use le passé composé, for instance, hier, yesterday, je suis rentré, I came back home, okay, rentré, je suis rentré, j'ai préparé à manger, etc, etc, okay, so orally you will, ex well, explain to a friend or to a colleague what you've been doing uh, yesterday, okay, you want to introduce these actions, okay, and in that case, that's the tense that you will use, the passé composé, all right? If you want to speak about an event of the past with, for instance, hier, yesterday, le mois dernier, last month, ce matin, this morning, cet après-midi, this afternoon, dimanche midi, so dimanche is um, Sunday, okay, midi, noon, jeudi, Thursday, matin, morning, okay, so with these structures, and if you're talking about an event, an action, okay, in that case, you definitely should use le passé composé. Okay, so of course these are examples. Okay, we've got so many, many others that I didn't have the. Well, I didn't want to put everything in this page. All right. So if you want to use, and this is quite important, a negative form. Okay, connected to uh, the present form or the present. Uh, for instance, if you want to say that, uh, so, je n'ai jamais fait de patinage. Uh, patinage is a uh, skate, ice skating, okay? You want to say that you never did ice skating. In that case, well, you should use the passé composé form, okay? Je n'ai jamais fait de patinage. Oops, I should put something instead. It's not a virgule, it's point. It should be point. Sorry, it was a little mistake here. Okay, but still, je n'ai jamais fait de patinage. 
Okay? Same example here. Uh, il n'a jamais eu de chance. Okay? Avoir de la chance, to have luck. Okay? Il n'a jamais, jamais, never eu de chance. So in that case, you should put that at the passé composé form. Okay? And then, well, same thing. Nous n'avons pas eu de chance. All right? In that case, it's with pas and not never, but it's clearly the same meaning nous n'avons pas eu de chance and in that case you should definitely use here the passé composé form okay so of course avoir and être can be quite tricky so that's the reason why we'll take few minutes to see them and we'll start with avoir okay this is the imparfait form j'avais tu avais il avait elle avait nous avions vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. And next to it, we'll put the passé composé form. J'ai eu, tu as eu, il a lu, il a eu, sorry, elle a eu. Nous avons eu, vous avez eu, ils ont eu, elles ont eu. Ok, so let's take one minute to see them one more time. J'avais, final S not pronounced. Tu avais, same thing. Il avait, final T not pronounced, elle avait. Nous avions, little liaison, final S not pronounced, nous avions. Vous aviez, same thing here, little liaison between the two. Ils avaient, so remember, even if we've got this A-I-E-N-T, well, we don't pronounce it, or we don't pronounce this E-N-T, so we get avait, okay, phonetically. Ils avaient, okay, and then elles avaient. And now for the passé composé form, so if you remember clearly, we use the verb avoir at the present form, then we put this participe passé form, so it does mean that it will be the same all the time, that's the reason why we see it here, okay? And this is pronounced, so it's an exception because normally you should pronounce it differently, but, so it's an ex exception, it, it is pronounced U, okay? U, that's the way you should pronounce it. So, j'ai eu, tu as eu, il a eu, elle a eu, nous avons eu, vous avez eu, ils ont eu, elles ont eu. All right? So, j'ai eu, tu as eu, il a eu, elle a eu, nous avons eu. Okay, so here you can see that we make double liaison. Nous avons eu. Okay, same thing here. Vous avez eu, ils ont, and then here. As well, tu. Ils ont tu, elles ont tu. All right. Let's see être now. And it goes like j'étais. So same thing here. We'll start with the, the imparfait form. Tu étais. Il était. Elle était. Nous étions. Vous étiez. Ils étaient. Elles étaient. And then the passé composé form. J'ai été. Tu as été. Il a été. Elle a été. Nous avons été, vous avez été, ils ont été, elles ont été. Okay, so let's take one minute again to pronounce them. J'étais, so final S not pronounced, tu étais, same form. Il était, elle était, final T not pronounced. Here, little liaison and final S not pronounced. Nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, liaison as well here, and then remember, this is not pronounced. Elles étaient. Okay. Then, so same same rule as uh, we saw for uh, avoir. So you get avoir here at the present form, and then you get this participe passé form. So that will repeat itself every time, and it's pronounced like été, été. All right. So j'ai été, tu as été, il a été, elle a été. So here double liaison. Nous avons été, vous avez été, same thing here, double, double liaison, vous avez été, ils ont été, so same thing here, you get first the liaison z, and then you get the t, ok, ils ont été, alright, ils ont été, elles ont été, ok, I hope it was clear. 
uh, if you want more videos then uh, youtube.com slash imagier and then if you want to send me a little message and um, check more things more material it's here imagier.net have a great day bye bye la forme passive so it's quite important take the time to relax and we'll start right now so i wanted to put an example simple sentence okay here we've got jean mange une pomme okay so jean that's the name of the person mange manger to eat and it's the present form une pomme an apple okay so if we have a look at this sentence of course jean is the subject of the sentence then we've got mange manger so it's the verb okay then we'll have une pomme so that's what we call complément d'objet direct i know it's a bit scary so complément just because it will complete the sentence it will give more information okay then objet direct so objet it's not because it's uh, an apple okay it could be a person it's uh, grammatically it's an object okay so and then direct just because between your verb and this complement you don't have any preposition okay so normally we tend to write it like that c o d okay complement d'objet direct all right and then if you think about the sentence normally when you get a sentence like that so jean mange une pomme well the important thing in this sentence is the subject okay for one good reason it's just because we start with it and as it's here in the first place well we tend to think that this is the most important thing of the of the sentence okay so if we would like to put the focus on le complément d'objet direct so if we would like to have une pomme as the main thing of the sentence okay so it would be actually the whole idea of this form passive okay so what could we do we could first take une pomme okay and then of course put it in the first place because well the focus will be on the first word or first thing that will come in the sentence then we take jean and then of course jean is not coming right after because the verb should come between between the two so it will be here okay and after that manger so the verb mange here should be transformed and that's the whole thing of the passive form okay you will have to use être so you will have to conjugate être plus le participe passé of your verb okay in that case it's quite easy because manger belongs to the first group of verbs so regular verbs and then when we talk about the participe passé form it will be manger like that with the accent on the top of the uh here okay so let's have a look how it will go une pomme est so the verb être at the present form because here we've got a sentence at the present form manger okay so as i said you've got this uh, accent aigu okay and the important thing here is that because we construct this passive form with être then we should at the end of the participe passé add something if it's feminine or if it's plural in that case une pomme an apple you can see here that it's feminine une pomme so we will add this e uh, so the mark of the feminine okay so une pomme est mangé jean and obviously something is missing here okay and the thing that we will put or we will add to construct this passif will be par all right so now we've got this sentence une pomme est mangée par 
gens. And it's the passive form. Ok Forme active, gens mange une pomme. Forme passive, une pomme est mangée par Jean. All right? Let's take another example. I changed, I did, I did put this la pomme instead of une pomme, but well, technically it's the same. The important thing is that this passive form will be, I mean, it will be possible to make it at the present form, or even at the future, at the passé composé, at the imparfait, because the only thing that will change will be être. Okay? So in that case, example for le présent, Jean mange la pomme. You change it and you get la pomme est mangée par Jean. Okay, so that's the one we saw, so it's actually quite easy. But then now, let's see if we've got le futur. So, the sentence will go like, Jean mangera, okay, so it's this, will eat, okay, la pomme. And then, if you want to put this sentence at the passive form, then, la pomme sera, so remember, sera, it's the form of être at the future, okay. So that's the only thing that will change. So you definitely should know by heart all the form of être and obviously avoir, but I mean not avoir for this lesson, but still. So you should know them by heart because you will have to use them. Uh, for instance, in this uh, passive form, you, you, you must use them. So la pomme sera mangée par Jean. So the rest doesn't change. I mean, that's the only thing that you will have to change. You put this être form, okay, at the correct tense. In that case, it's the future. And then let's see le passé composé now. Jean a mangé la pomme. Okay, and then if you, well, change it and put it at the passive form. So, la pomme a été, remember this a été, is the passé composé form of être. Okay, mangé par Jean. The rest doesn't change. Okay, so let's have a look at the conditionnel présent because we saw it already in the previous unit. Jean mangerait la pomme, okay, would eat, okay, si, mangerait la pomme. So if you change it, la pomme serait, okay, and that's the conditionnel présent form of être, mangé par Jean. Okay, then imparfait, Jean mangeait la pomme. La pomme était mangée par Jean. And the last one, conditionnel passé, because that's the last one we saw. Jean aurait mangé la pomme. La pomme aurait été, and that's here, aurait été conditionnel passé form of être mangé par Jean. Okay? So remember, être, then Participe passé, then par. Don't forget this par because it's, uh, it's quite important. La conjugaison à la forme passive. So we saw la forme passive in the previous video lesson. So I definitely advise you to watch it if you didn't do it. Uh, and then in this lesson we'll take a few examples or at least two examples, two verbs, and then we'll see how they, how they go. Okay, so remember... Uh, that we'll see in this lesson, le présent, le futur, le passé composé, le conditionnel présent, and then l'imparfait. These are the verbs that we already covered in these lessons or in the previous lessons, okay? So, that's the reason why we will try to see how they go at the passive form, all right? So, remember that if, we, if you want to construct this uh, form of passive, then the first thing will be être. And this verb, être, will be changed. So according to the fact whether it's present, futur, passé composé, etc. And then after that, you will put this participe passé form, okay, to get your passive form. All right, so that's it. We'll take two examples. The first one will be admirer, to admire. And then the second one will, will be choisir, to choose, okay? But then the idea is that as we will change them 
in or at this uh, form passive. So clearly, it will be to be admired and to be chosen. Okay? So let's see now. Admiré. Présent. So it will be je suis admiré. Tu es admiré. Il est admiré. Elle est admirée. Nous sommes admirés. Vous êtes admirés. Ils sont admirés. Elles sont admirées. All right, so as you can see, être will be the only thing that will change here. All right. Well, if we are really honest, then we can say that the participle passé form here is changing as well because if you can see, if you have a look here, it's here like that written a, and then here you just add this a. Uh, okay. Remember that we add this final a. Uh, because we've got here a feminine subject and so this final uh, is the mark of the feminine so singular feminine okay but then if you really want to think about that phonetically you don't pronounce it so whether it's masculine admiré or feminine admiré you will pronounce them the same way but still if you want to write it correctly you should add this uh so same thing here, if we look at this last form here, we've got this S at the end, so S is the mark of the plural, so you should put it at the end, you don't pronounce it, okay, so you get admiré, but still you should put it. And here you've got, well, first the feminine, E, and then the plural, S. Phonetically, it is the same, admiré. Okay, so you've got phonetically only one form and it's admiré, okay, but then keep in mind that because we constructed with être here, then we should put the feminine here if the subject is feminine, the plural here if the subject is masculine plural here, and then the feminine plural here if the subject is feminine plural. Okay, so it will be the same for all the tenses. Okay, so I won't repeat that after. Okay, and then keep in mind that être, so the verb, will be the only thing that will change in this, I mean, these structures. All right, so let's see now le futur. Je serai admiré. Tu seras admiré. Il sera admiré. Elle sera admirée. Nous serons admirés. Vous serez admirés. Ils seront admirés. Elles seront admirées. All right. So if we want to make this structure at the passé composé form, so j'ai été admiré. So you can see that here you've got j'ai été. All right. So it's the verb être, to be, okay, but at the passé composé form. All right. Tu as été admiré. Il a été admiré. Elle a été admirée. Nous avons été admirés. Vous avez été admiré. Ils ont été admirés. Elles ont été admirées. All right. So if we want to make it the conditionnel present form, then we will get je serais admiré. Tu serais admiré. Il serait admiré. Elle serait admirée. Nous serions admirés. Vous seriez admiré. Il serait admiré. Elle serait admirée. Okay, so same thing here. If you look carefully, that's only the verb être that will change. And then imparfait form would be j'étais admiré, tu étais admiré, il était admiré, elle était admirée, nous étions admirés, vous étiez admirés, ils étaient admirés, elles étaient admirées. All right? So Clearly, it's not that difficult. The only thing that you should definitely remember by heart is the verb. It's the verb être at all the forms that we already covered. Okay, and then you will have to use it well clearly to make this uh, passive form. All right. So the second verb that I wanted to uh, will introduce was uh, choisir. Okay. So at the present form, it will go like: Je suis choisi. Tu es choisi. Il est choisi. Elle est choisie. Nous sommes choisis, vous êtes choisis, ils sont choisis, elles sont choisis. So same thing here that we had for admirer. So remember that you will have to here, for example, put the 
a at the end for the feminine okay because here we've got the feminine singular so we just add a okay you will have this s at the end here for the plural so masculine plural and you will have this a s feminine plural form okay same rule you don't pronounce them so phonetically you will have choisi 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 and choisi so the same phonetical form okay and it's quite easy to remember je serai choisi tu seras choisi il sera choisi elle sera choisi nous serons choisis vous serez choisi ils seront choisis elles seront choisies okay let's see the passé composé form j'ai été choisi tu as été choisi il a été choisi elle a été choisie nous avons été choisis vous avez été choisis ils ont été choisis elles ont été choisies then the conditionnel present form je serai choisi tu serais choisi il serait choisi elle serait choisie nous serions choisis vous seriez choisi il serait choisi elle serait choisie okay and last but not least imparfait j'étais choisi tu étais choisi il était choisi elle était choisie nous étions choisis vous étiez choisi ils étaient choisis elles étaient choisies la géographie l'europe okay so i did put this f just to give you the information that it's feminine okay because it doesn't show here with the article l'europe l'asie l'afrique l'amérique du nord l'amérique centrale l'amérique du sud okay so let's see them one more time l'europe remember this final e uh, it's not really present it only gives you the possibility to pronounce this p p p at the end okay europe l'asie same thing here final e uh, is not pronounced l'afrique same thing here final e uh, it's only the k, k at the end that you will hear l'afrique okay amérique same thing as afrique amérique du nord final day not pronounced l'amérique du nord l'amérique centrale same thing here centrale remember e n nasal so it goes in your nose en oh, en oh. centrale all right l'amérique centrale l'amérique du sud here you should pronounce the d sud sud okay l'amérique du sud all right so one more time l'europe l'asie l'afrique l'amérique du nord l'amérique centrale l'amérique du sud l'australie l'océanie l'antarctique l'eurasie l'océan atlantique l'océan pacifique okay so let's see them one more time l'australie final e uh, not pronounced l'océanie final e uh, not pronounced remember q u e here it's k okay so tic l'antarctique l'antarctique l'eurasie final e uh, not pronounced l'eurasie okay same thing here for the ik okay l'océan atlantique 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 l'océan pacifique l'océan indien l'océan arctique la mer du nord la mer de chine la mer des antilles la mer méditerranée okay so let's see them l'océan indien so remember here it's nasal and it can be quite tricky so you, first you've got this un here and then you've got this yin yin okay indien l'océan indien l'océan arctique remember tic ik la mer du nord final day not pronounced la mer de chine 
Remember, don't insist on the uh, shin. Okay? And then this ch, 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 shin. All right? La mer des Antilles. So here it's quite interesting because, well, you've got this E and then double L, E, uh, S. Okay? So final S and E, uh, really you don't pronounce them. So you get this E, E sound. Antilles. Okay? La mer des Antilles. The liaison between the two. Des Antilles. La mer des Antilles. La mer Méditerranée. Okay, here final E uh, not pronounced, but then you pronounce this E at the end. Méditerranée. Okay, la mer Méditerranée. La mer Rouge. La mer Caspienne. La mer Noire. La mer de Bering. Okay, so... La mer rouge. Remember, G and then E, J, J. Rouge. OK? La mer rouge. La mer caspienne. OK? E and then double consonant here, and it's the same. N, N. So it does open the sound here. So it's E, E. Caspienne. Caspienne. OK? Then here, la mer noire. Same thing here that we had previously, final E uh, not pronounced, okay? And then O-I, remember, wa wa wa, noir, noir. La mer noire, okay? La mer de Bering. La météo, so I hope it's okay with you. Let's start right now. La météo, un nuage, une pluie, une goutte de pluie, un éclair, une brume, un brouillard. All right, so let's see them one more time. Un nuage, une pluie, une goutte de pluie, un éclair. So you can see I make this little liaison between the two. Un éclair, une brume, un brouillard. Final day not pronounced. Une rosée. Un verglas, un ciel clair, un ciel couvert, un ciel nuageux, une bruine. So let's see them. Une rosée, final E not pronounced. Un verglas, final S not pronounced. Un verglas, un ciel clair, un ciel couvert. Final T not pronounced. Un ciel couvert. Un ciel nuageux. This can be quite tricky, but take the time to nu-a-jeu. Remember, final X here not pronounced. Nu-a-jeu. Okay? Nuageux. Un ciel nuageux. Okay? Une bruine. Une pluie. Une neige, une averse, un orage, un ouragan, une averse de grêle, une pluie, final E uh, not pronounced, une neige, une averse, so same thing here, un neige, final E uh, not pronounced, you only pronounce this J, same thing here, averse, ok, S is pronounced, The E is not pronounced. Un orage. Same thing here. J. OK, not the E. Un ouragan. So, liaison here, like we had here as well. Une averse de grêle. All right. So, I wanted to put them with the, the article un ou une to make it more clear. But it's uh, clear that in some cases, uh, well... You will have to use the instead of a, so le or la, okay, instead of un ou une. But it's it was just to make it more clear that I wanted to use only un ou une. And after that, you can decide whether you want to use uh, this article or the other one. Le climat, okay, so it will be a short one, vocabulary one, but still it's quite interesting. Let's see that. Le climat. Les climats tropicaux. Les climats tempérés. 
les climats polaires. Okay, so, les climats tropicaux. So you can see that even if we've got the plural form here, S, we don't pronounce the S, and then we don't pronounce the T either. Les climats tropicaux. Final X, not pronounced. Les climats tempérés. Final S, not pronounced, but then you should definitely pronounce the accent. Tempéré. Okay? Les climats polaires. So, same thing, same thing here. E and S are not pronounced. Polaire. Okay? Les climats continentaux. Les climats subtropicaux. Les climats de montagne. Les climats subarctiques. Okay, so, les climats continentaux. Remember, final X not pronounced, and then this A, U together, they give you the sound O. Okay? Les climats subtropicaux. Les climats de montagne. So, remember here, O, N, O, N, M, O, N, T, A, and then this G, N, E, N, N, Montagne. All right? Les climats subarctiques. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 8, Leçon L. And in this lesson we'll discover together le plus que parfait. So it's uh, quite interesting, not that difficult and quite useful. So let's see what le plus que parfait is. So first in this video, as usual for the tenses because it's a past tense, we'll first discover together or see together l'utilisation, so when should we use le plus que parfait and then how do we make, construct, build this tense. Okay, the first thing, utilisation, when do we use le plus que parfait. Important. If you want to, well, should I, yeah, I will read that the French way first, okay. Exprimer des faits qui se sont passés avant d'autres faits passés. Oh my God, it can be quite tricky. It's not really tricky. Let's say that if you want to resume or if you want to say it fast, le plus que parfait is the past in the past. Okay, so let's see. Now you've got the timeline here. Let's see first, second and third thing. The first one could be Le présent, so we are here right now, okay? Then, this is the past, so if you want to express something that happened in the past, whether you use le passé composé or we saw that previously, l'imparfait, okay? And then, you've got here, le plus que parfait, okay? So, first, if you want to talk about what happened yesterday or then even years ago, so you will have to use whether passé composé or imparfait, okay? But then, if you want to make a relation to something that happened previously, you should definitely use this plus que parfait form, okay? So that's the reason why we tend to say that it's the past in the past, all right? So, Let's have an example. Ce matin, j'ai mangé le gâteau que tu avais préparé hier. Okay? If we have a look, we've got two verbs in this sentence. This is the first one, j'ai mangé. It is the passé composé form. This is the second one. Tu avais préparé. This is le plus que parfait. Ok. Passé composé. Plus que parfait. So, what do you want to say here? You want to say, ce matin, this morning, j'ai mangé, mangé is to eat, le gâteau, the cake, que, that, tu avais préparé, préparé sous prepper, yesterday, hier. Ok. So, you want to say that, ce matin, j'ai mangé le gâteau, Okay, so it happened in the morning, this morning, and then yesterday, you had prepared this cake. Okay, so that's the reason why in the second part of the sentence, you use le plus que parfait, because this action happened before. Alright, so it was 
the past in the past. Okay, so let's see now how to construct it. And it's not that difficult because first, if you have a look, so I did put some uh, regular verbs here, first one, je mangeais au restaurant. So this form here is the imparfait. Okay, so why did I put the imparfait? Just for you to have a look at the ending of these verb, this is avoir, okay? So you can see that they end actually the same way, A-E-S, A-E-S, okay? And then if you have a look here, you've got manger, manger, so you can notice that this is the participe passé form of the verb manger, manger is to eat, okay? So first you've got avoir, then you've got the participe passé, okay? Maybe it rings a bell for you. Uh, second example, tu regardais la télévision, okay, tu avais regardé la télévision. So if you have a look, well, it looks the same. You've got first avoir, then you've got participe passé here, okay, and then, so I took this verb aller, aller is to go, and remember when we've got these composed tenses, it's a bit tricky because it doesn't use avoir as most of the verbs, but it uses être and look here it's the same il était allé so it does use être here and then we've got the participe passé form all right so the rule is that if you want to construct this plus que parfait form then you should use first avoir at the imparfait then the participe passé and you will get your plus que parfait form, okay? In some cases, you will use être at the imparfait form, then the participe passé, and you will get le plus que parfait, okay? We've been covering already few composed tenses in French, and, well, it, it does follow exactly the same rules, okay? So that's the reason why it will be quite familiar for you, because the following verbs, aller, to go, Arriver, to arrive, descendre, to go down, devenir, to become, entrer, to enter, to come in, monter, to go up, mourir, to die, naître, to born, partir, to leave, rester, to stay, retourner, to return, sortir, to go out, tomber, to fell, to fall, sorry, and then venir, to come, so all these verbs will use être, as, I mean, they do for all the other composed tense that we saw, uh, like passé composé, for instance, okay? And then all the verbes réfléchis, so reflexive verbs, like se regarder, s'appeler, se présenter, so all these verbs will also require être, okay, for the plus que parfait, okay? So... Let's see one more time the imparfait form of avoir and être as well, but we'll start with avoir, just because that's the form, I mean, these are the forms that you will have to use when you want to construct this plus que parfait. So it goes like, j'avais, tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. Okay, and then for être, j'étais, Tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. All right, so you can see here that we've got this A-I-S ending and A-I-T ending. You pronounce them the same way, okay? J'avais, tu avais, il avait. And then you saw probably that we've got also here A-V-A-I-E-N-T, but then you pronounce it avait. So, the same way as we pronounce here, okay? J'avais, tu avais, il avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, okay? The only difference is that you will have to make the liaison between the two. Elles avaient, ils avaient, okay? Same thing here. Était, 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 and the last one, était, so you pronounce them the same way. J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, Elles étaient. All right? So, remember that 
for these participle passive forms. So the second part that you should have. Okay. Um, when we're talking about uh, verbs, so in French we've got three groups. Okay. The first one is the er verbs. So verbs ending with er. Only one exception, and it's aller. But then the good news is, is that aller will behave the same way, so it won't be tricky. So remember that when you've got a verb like parler, for instance, here, parler is to talk or to speak, it ends with er, okay? You will take this er away, and you will replace it with e accent aigu, parler. Same thing, regarder, to watch, you take this er away, and you put this e here. Aller, even if it doesn't belong to the first group, it will behave the same way, so that's a good news. Aller, er, you take it away, and then you put this e, okay? Second group of verbs, er, unfortunately for you, not all the er verbs, okay? But then these are from the second group, choisir, to choose. You take this er away, and then you change it, you put e instead, choisi. Finir, to finish, to end. Ir, away, same rule. And then you put fini. Unir, ir, you take it away, to unite. And then you get uni. Okay? After that, when we talk about the third group, it's quite tricky. And my advice would be to try to learn them by heart, like in many languages. But still, we have some subgroups. Okay? So, you've got a list here. So, the one that will end with U, for instance, connaître, to know, être, will become U, connu, all right, voir, to see, voir will become U, vu, partir, well, in that case, they will have this I, even if it ends with IR, uh, it's not from the second group, it's from the third group, okay, so, but then it becomes parti, okay, so quite easy, rire, will become ri, okay, partir to leave, and then rire to laugh. Ité, like écrire to write, I-R-E will become ité here. Dire, to say, I-R-E will become ité, okay, remember, you put this T, you don't pronounce it, écrit, dit, all right? And then the last subgroup here, or I think it's the last, I'm not sure about that anymore, <laughs> mettre, E-T-T-R-E -E will become I-S, mi, same advice here, don't pronounce the final S like we had here. T is not pronounced, S is not pronounced. Mi, uh, mettre to put. And then prendre, prendre is to take, okay, E-N-D-R-E, -E, and it will become E-S, pris. All right. An example for parler, so parler will go like that for the plus que parfait. J'avais parlé, tu avais parlé. Il avait parlé, elle avait parlé, nous avions parlé, vous aviez parlé, ils avaient parlé, elles avaient parlé. Okay, so if you look carefully, I did put this E uh, in orange just to show you that when you construct, I mean, a normal structure or simple structure like subject, verb, okay, nothing in between, then if you have avoir, you don't put anything at the end. So you don't need to add this E for the feminine or S for the plural. Just keep your participe passé like that. If you constructed with avoir. But, have a look here. Aller, you write it like that. Aller. This is the masculine singular form, so basic form. Feminine singular form, you will have to add this E for the feminine. Masculine plural form, you will have to add this S for the plural. And then here, feminine plural form, you will have to add this E, S, so E for the feminine and S for the plural. The good news is that phonetically they go the same way, aller, 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 all right? But if you want to write correctly, remember to put E for the feminine, S for the plural, and obviously E, S for the feminine plural. Okay? So let's see, aller now. J'étais allé. Tu étais allé. Il était allé. Elle était allée. Nous étions allés. 
Vous étiez allé, ils étaient allés, elles étaient allées. All right, so you can hear that here, for instance, I make here a liaison, ils étaient, and then here I make a liaison as well. Ils étaient allés, elles étaient allées. All right, and then remember, allez, 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 and then allez. So the same phonetical form, okay? If you want to construct this plus que parfait, so I took this example with a verbe réfléchi, okay? Je m'étais présenté, tu t'étais présenté, il s'était présenté, elle s'était présenté, nous nous étions présentés, vous vous étiez présenté, il s'était présenté, elle s'était présenté. All right, so remember, all these reflexive verbs, so les verbes réfléchis, will require all the time être, okay? Remember, avoir at the imparfait form, and then participe passé, and you will get a beautiful plus que parfait, and in some cases, être at the imparfait form, plus participe passé, will give you another beautiful plus que parfait. That was, it. that was it for the plus que parfait. Uh, if you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier, and then the website is here, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent, and this is Unité 8, leçon M. And in this lesson, we'll work on les pronoms relatif. So pronounce um, one more time, yes, because we, we've got quite many pronouns in French and we use them quite often, okay, but in that case we're going to work on les pronoms relatifs and we'll see first qui, then que, after that dont, and finally où, okay. So the first one that will work with will be qui, okay. So pronounce as usual, are these little words that you use to avoid repetition if something was already said or if you want to, in one sentence, combine two different sentences. Okay, so the first one, key, normally we use it because it's subject. Okay, so it can be whether for a person or a thing, pour une personne ou une chose, okay, and then the first examples that we saw, we'll see, sorry, will be for une personne, okay, so, qui, so if we take this example, the first one, first sentence, nous connaissons un homme, okay, connaître is to know, nous connaissons un homme, and then we've got the second sentence, cet homme travaille dans un restaurant, Okay, so it's totally possible to have these two sentences like that, okay, but then if you look carefully, we repeat cet homme or un homme, okay, we've got here cet homme, okay, and it's here in the first sentence as well. Let's imagine that we would like to combine these two sentences, make one and just avoid repeating here un homme or cet homme. In that case, well, we will use this pronom relatif, okay? We will use this qui just because if you look carefully in the second sentence here, cet homme travaille dans un restaurant, well, cet homme here is subject of the verb. And that's the reason why we'll use qui, okay? So it could be a person, like in that example, okay, cet homme, but it could be also an object or a thing, okay? So, the sentence you will get will be this one. Nous connaissons un homme qui, and that's where you put your pronom relatif, travaille dans un restaurant, okay? So, it is quite easy to make. It's not that difficult. You just need to remember that it should come well before the verb here, all right? And then we've been choosing this key just because it is the subject of the verb, all right? So, let's see now the same sentence, nous connaissons un homme, but then here, if you look, cet homme a travaillé 
dans un restaurant. So here we've got the passé composé form here, you remember. You put avoir first and then you put here your pa participe passé form. All right. So of course, cet homme, we would like to avoid repeating this one. So we'll get this sentence. Nous connaissons un homme qui a travaillé dans un restaurant. So basically it is quite simple because uh, it doesn't change that much. You only need to use again one more time this pronoun relatif qui, okay, before the verb. So keep in mind that even if you've got two forms here, it's only one verb, okay? It's composed. You've got first avoir and then participe présent, uh, sorry, participe passé, but still it's only one verb here. So that's the reason why qui should come before, okay? And then we'll see a third example. Nous connaissons un homme. Cet homme va travailler dans un restaurant. Okay. So in that case, what do we have here? We've got a second sentence in which we've got this is going to work. Okay. So va it's aller. Okay. So that's what we call futur proche. Okay. So This man, cet homme, is going to work, va travailler, all right? So, of course, same thing here. We don't want to repeat cet homme or un homme, okay? So, we will get this. Nous connaissons un homme qui va travailler dans un restaurant, all right? So, just before the verbs here, all right? So, it's quite simple, okay? Let's see now if we replace une chose, a thing, okay, with qui. So... Je regarde une voiture, cette voiture est rouge, ok Regardez ce to watch, une voiture, a car. Je regarde une voiture, cette voiture est rouge. So, of course, in that case, we would like to avoid the repetition of une voiture, ok And then, je regarde une voiture qui est rouge, all right So, je regarde une voiture qui est rouge. So, exactly the same thing here, you just put this qui, and then you've get the verb after, uh, after that, est rouge, all right? Let's see the same sentence, but then let's put here the par, uh, passé composé. J'ai regardé une voiture, cette voiture était imparfait, rouge, okay? J'ai regardé une voiture, cette voiture était rouge. So, same thing here, we don't want to repeat voiture, then we will get the simple sentence. J'ai regardé une voiture qui était rouge. So just before the verb. Let's put that at the future. So, je vais regarder une voiture. So I am going to watch une voiture. Okay. Cette voiture sera, so here you've got the real future, what we call future simple. Okay. Is, so it's uh, will be, uh, sera rouge. Exactly the same thing, we don't want to repeat une voiture, so je vais regarder une voiture qui sera rouge. All right, so it's really simple. You should keep in mind that first first thing, well, of course, you get to spot the, the, the word you want to replace. And if it is subject like we have here, then you should put qui. So whether it's a person or an object or a thing, So it will be key, just because it's the subject of the sentence, okay? And you have to put it here before the verb, okay? Now, we'll have a look at que, okay? So que, you should remember that it will replace what we call complément d'objet direct. So complément, it's because it will complete the sentence. Objet, because it's what we call grammatical object. Okay? And then direct, just because we don't use or we won't use any preposition between the verb and this grammatical object. Okay? And then normally we tend to write it shortly, C-O-D. Okay? So if you see this C-O-D written somewhere, it's just because we want to say complément d'objet direct. Okay, and then the same thing will work first with a person, so example with persons, and then shows things, and then let's start now. So, que, c'est l'acteur, tu admires cet acteur. Okay, so in that case, of course, if we look carefully, we would like to avoid repeating 
acteur because it's in the first sentence and then it is in the second sentence as well but if you have a look here in the second sentence you get tu okay so it's the subject then you get admire so it's the verb admire to admire all right and after that you've got cet acteur so the thing we would like to replace okay and then if we look carefully so what we saw is that cet acteur is well first it's a complement okay it will complete the, the the subject and the verb then it is what we call grammatical objects and if you look carefully between admirer and cet acteur we don't have anything so we don't have any preposition so it does mean that it is direct direct okay in that case we should use que all right so let's look at the sentence now c'est l'acteur que tu admires all right so you first put back your first sentence here c'est l'acteur then you put this pronoun relatif que and then the sentence continues tu admire subject verb okay now let's have a look at the same thing but at the feminine c'est l'actrice tu admires cette actrice okay so exactly the same sentence but it's the feminine form c'est l'actrice tu admires cette actrice okay we don't want to repeat actrice obviously then we get c'est l'actrice que tu admires all right so same concept same structure no problem so let's see now with une chose a thing okay c'est la voiture tu adores cette voiture okay and then obviously we don't want to repeat la voiture okay adorer to adore tu adores cette voiture c'est la voiture que tu adores all right so same concept you first put que here then subject verb okay be careful and be careful at the passé composé form why well look normally when we construct a sentence we first start with the sujet then we've got the verb then we've got so what we saw complement d'objet direct okay and normally when we introduce the passé composé form we say that if we use avoir normally you don't have to put anything at the end of your participe passé form so you don't need to mark the feminine form or the plural or the feminine plural okay but then when we've got this special structure with first le pronom relatif cod so what we just saw this que before the verb the rule will be that you will have to put the feminine or the plural or the feminine plural at the end of your participe passé so let's have a look first and it will be quite easy because it is here have a look c'est l'acteur tu as admiré cet acteur so here you've got the passé composé form okay but then it's the masculine so normally it shouldn't be a problem if we look the sentence c'est l'acteur que tu as admiré all right so we've got this que pronom relatif complément d'objet direct so i told you that if it if it's before the verb at the passé composé form it can be tricky but in that case it's the masculine form so it doesn't change anything at the end of your participe passé form here that's the reason why it doesn't change here if you look carefully it's the same form okay but if we take now the feminine form c'est l'actrice tu as admiré cette actrice we want to replace actrice then we will have c'est l'actrice que so the structure doesn't change at all tu as admiré the only thing that you will have to put is this e uh, which is the mark of the feminine at the end of your participe passé form here okay the good news is that phonetically here 
you don't pronounce it, okay? But in some cases, you will have some participe passé ending with maybe T or something like that. And then if you put the feminine form, you will have to pronounce it, okay? So it's really important to remember that with this kind of structure, when you've got this pronom relatif and then the que complément d'objet direct at the passé composé form, and you've got the feminine form, you will have to add a at the end of your participe passé here. Okay? If we've got the plural, like here, so masculine, but then the plural form, ce sont les acteurs, tu as admiré ces acteurs, okay? So we just don't want to repeat les acteurs. Ce sont les acteurs que tu as admiré, and then have a look here, We've got the mark of the plural, and it's S at the end, okay? So, same thing as usual in French. You don't pronounce it, okay? But it's really important to remember that you should put at the end of your participe passé here, the S, okay? If we have, like here, the feminine plural form, ce sont les actrices. Tu as admiré ces actrices. Okay. We don't want to repeat les actrices. Then, ce sont les actrices que tu as admiré. Okay. So remember here, admiré. Well, first you've got this E, uh, mark of the feminine. Then you've got this S at the end, mark of the plural. Okay. Phonetically, you don't pronounce it. But still, remember, you get to put it, okay? A uh, S. So as I said, you know, for this admire, adore, all these examples that we've been covering so far, you don't pronounce it. So that's the reason why I wanted to put few sentences in which, well, you'll see that you can see the difference. So the first one, c'est le camion que tu as conduit. Okay, le camion, it's the truck, okay, que tu as conduit, conduire is to drive, okay, and you get here the passé composé form, okay. So in that case, of course, we've been using this pronom relatif, que, okay, and it's complément d'objet direct, all right. It is before the verb tu as conduit, here, so normally it does mean that the rule, well, tells us to, 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 to put something at the end of the participe passé, if it's the feminine, or if it's the plural, or feminine plural. In that case, we've got le camion, so we don't put anything at the end of conduit. We just leave conduit like that, okay? But if we put, well, the same sentence, but at the plural. In that case, ce sont les camions que tu as conduit, okay? You will have this S, you don't pronounce it, but it will be here. Now, the feminine. So we take la voiture. The car, okay, la voiture, it's feminine. C'est la voiture que tu as conduite. And that's when you hear the difference between conduit, because remember, final T is not pronounced, conduit, here, and then the feminine, conduite. Okay, so here you can listen to this t, t okay, conduite, right? C'est la voiture que tu as conduite. Okay, and then the same thing for the plural, so it will be feminine plural because it's les voitures. Ce sont les voitures que tu as conduites. All right, so that's the reason why it's quite important to remember this rule, even if in most of the cases you won't pronounce the difference between your participe passé, whether it's at the masculine, the feminine, or the plural form. But in some cases, like, well, these examples, you can hear the difference between, at least here, the masculine and the feminine form, okay? And then, the last thing, tricky thing <laughs> with que, is if you put something after, and it's not with a vowel, so remember, as usual, in French, when we've got this uh and something after, so a vowel, they don't really get along, so the rule is that you should take uh, away, okay? So it will go like that. So, c'est la boisson que il demande. So normally, if we, if we respect the rule, you know, we should put this que pronoun, okay? But then, as I showed, they don't really get along, as usual, and so que 
or E uh, should disappear. So you get the final structure. C'est la boisson qu'il demande. Now let's have a look at don. Okay? And the important thing with don is that you will use this don instead of complément avec préposition de. All right. So the important thing here is that so it should be com a complément, so something that will complete the sentence, so coming after the verb. All right. And then it should be introduced with this préposition de here. All right. So let's have a look. And well, as we did previously, so we'll first start with the person and then after that, in shows a thing. Voici l'homme. Tout le monde parle de cet homme. Okay, so voici l'homme. Here is the man. Okay, so even if it, well, it looks a bit strange to have a short sentence like that. Okay, but still it was for the example, so I thought it might be useful. And then tout le monde, tout le monde, everybody, everyone, parle, to talk, de cet homme. Okay, so the important thing here is to spot First, well, of course, we've got the subject here, tout le monde. Then we've got the verb, parler. Okay? Then if you look carefully between our complement here, cet homme, because that's the thing we don't want to repeat, and the verb, so between them, we've got the preposition de. Okay? And it tells us that if we don't want to repeat l'homme, okay, we will have to use this don pronom here. And the sentence will go like that. Voici l'homme, so the first one doesn't change. Don, so you put here your pronom relatif, then tout le monde parle. So you just put back what we've got, subject and verb. Okay, it's not really difficult. Then if we put the same structure but then at the passé composé form, Voici l'homme. Tout le monde a parlé de cet homme. So same thing. We don't want to repeat l'homme. Okay. Voici l'homme. Don. So same position. Tout le monde a parlé. Okay. So it doesn't change anything. You just put it. But then, well, the tense is uh, is different here because it's passé composé. Okay. So let's see now if we would put the same sentence, but then at the Future proche, so near future. Normally I tend to put this structure just because it means that you've got two verbs here, okay, just to see. So l'homme is the thing we don't want to repeat. So voici l'homme dont tout le monde va parler. Okay, so it doesn't change anything. It should be here and then the sentence continues. Let's see if we want to replace une chose, a thing, then... Je n'aime pas le livre. Nous nous servons de ce livre. Okay, so aimer is to like. In that case, you've got the negative form. Je n'aime pas le livre. Okay, nous nous servons. Okay, so in that case, I wanted to use this se servir. Se servir is to use something, but it's se servir, so it's a reflexive verb. Okay, de ce livre. And then you can see that we've got ce livre. Okay. We've got the verb here, and between the two, we've got the preposition de. So it does tell us that if we don't want to repeat le livre, we will have to use this pronom relatif don. So the sentence will be, je n'aime, sorry, I forgot the pas, <laughs> je n'aime pas le livre dont nous nous servons. All right, so remember, you should put the pas. <laughs> I forgot to write it, sorry. Je n'aime pas le livre dont nous nous servons. Okay, and then, où, okay, the last one for this lesson. Où, well, you've got two options. Whether you will use this où to replace what we call complément de lieu. Lieu is a place, okay, or then you will use it to Replace un complément de temps. Okay? Temps, time. Let's see first if we want to replace complément de lieu. Okay? So, je vous présente la ville. Je suis né dans cette ville. Okay? So, je vous présente, présenter, to present, la ville. La ville is the town. 
Je suis né, I was born, dans cette ville. Ok? So, in that case, well, have a look. You've got cette ville and la ville. So, probably that's the thing we don't want to repeat. Ok? And then here we get dans, so it's in. Ok? So, you know that it's a place. Alright? So, it's what we could call, or what we call, complément de lieu. So, it's a place. Alright? So, if you want to avoid repeating la ville, then you will have to use this ou pronom. And the sentence will go like that. Je vous présente la ville. Okay, so your first sentence doesn't change at all. Ou, so you put your pronom here. And then, je suis né. The rest continue. Okay, like that. Okay? And then let's have another, another situation when we want to replace a complément de temps. Okay, so it's not... It, will, it won't be a place, but it will be something with the time. So, où? C'est l'année. Okay, and it's year. C'est l'année. Il a fait très froid cette année. Okay, so you can see here. Well, you've got the, this passé composé form. Okay, faire froid when it's cold. Okay, so it was cold or cette année. And then, well, obviously, we don't want to repeat année because it's here. And it's here, okay? And in that case, well, you tend to use cette année just to indicate the time or when it was, okay? So, c'est l'année où il a fait très froid. All right, so quite simple. First part doesn't change. Then you put your pronoun où, then the sentence continues like that. Il a fait très froid. All right? few other examples for this time concept because normally obviously in many cases people tend to think that ou it's only for a place so that's the reason why I thought it might be useful to give you a few examples just to, to see uh, how to use it so the first one for instance c'est le jour, le jour de day c'est le jour où elle est venue ok, venir is to come c'est le jour où elle est venue Second example, ils arrivent le jour où tu seras absente. Ok, arriver to arrive, sera, so remember, it's the verb être, to be, ok, but it's the, f uh, the future form. Tu seras absente, absente, you won't be here. C'est le moment où le bébé va dormir, le moment, the time, où le bébé, the baby, va dormir, is going to sleep. C'est le moment où le bébé va dormir. Ok? So, I know it was long, but it was quite important. So, if you're not really sure about the use, don't be afraid to watch the video one more time. If you want more videos, then the YouTube channel is here, youtube.com slash imagier, and then the website is waiting for you, imagier.net. Have a great day! Les structures avec deux pronoms, and especially when one of them, so one of the pronouns, when you, you will use two pronouns, and one of them will be en, okay, so it was introduced in a previous uh, video lesson, okay, so we'll work on this lesson, in this lesson on the pronoun en, okay, and then next lesson will be with le, la, le, the lesson after lui, leur, and the last lesson regarding this topic with to pronounce will be with the pronoun i. Okay, so let's see now with en. So, m or them m apostrophe, te, the apostrophe, or then lui, se or s apostrophe, nous, vous, leur, and se or s apostrophe will be placed before en. Okay, so that's the rule. En will come after me or m apostrophe, te or t apostrophe, lui, se or s apostrophe, nous, vous, leur or se or s apostrophe. Okay, so that's the way it will go. So en is coming after. Okay, so we'll see a few examples, and then I thought it might be useful to put well the examples at the 
present form, so le présent, and then passé composé, because if you remember correctly, this uh, passé composé is uh, what we call a composed tense, and then the future proche, so this near future structure that we've got, and uh, normally you, you make it with the verb aller, and then your verb at the infinitive, and it's quite interesting because in that case, well, it gives you two verbs, okay, so the question is how do you put your pronouns when you've got two verbs in your sentence, okay? So let's see now the present. Mon ami me donne un conseil. Alright, so mon ami, my friend, me donne, donne is to give un conseil, an advice, okay? So let's say that we would like to replace un conseil in that case, and then we saw in the previous lesson that un conseil could be replaced with un, okay? And so, mon ami me, so it should be before, if you remember what we saw previously, so me should be in the first position, and then en should come right after, and then the verb, all right? But then if you remember, we've got this e uh, here, so me, and then en is starting with the vowel as well, so e uh, should go away, that's the reason why you will have this m apostrophe, so m'en donne un, all right? Second example, ta femme t'achète une montre. Ta femme, your wife, achète is to, to buy une montre, a watch. Okay? And then, of course, we would like to replace une montre in that case. We will use this en pronoun. Okay? And you get ta femme. So you've got this te again, but then as it's with the vowel here, en, then e uh, needs to go away. Ton achète une. All right? So as we saw for the rule, First we've got uh, after that on is coming, and then we've got the verb, okay? Then, il nous apporte des fruits, okay? So remember, apporter is to bring des fruits, fruits, okay? In that case, we would like to replace des fruits, and so we will replace it with the pronoun en, okay? Il nous en apporte, all right? So, nous first, then your pronoun en, then the verb, okay? So let's see now with the passé composé, so same sentence, mon ami m'a donné un conseil, all right, mon ami m'en a donné un. So it will be exactly the same thing, especially if you think that a donné, the thing that you see here, okay, it's only one verb. Okay. So you've got two parts because it's composed, all right? So first you've got avoir and then you've got this participe, passé form, okay? But it's only one verb, all right? That's the reason why you put first your pronoun here, me, and then you put this second pronoun en before avoir, okay? Because this is the verb here. So you get mon ami m'en a donné un. Let's see now the same sentence that we had previously but at the passé composé form. Ta femme t'a acheté une montre. Okay, so same thing here. Ta femme, so te should be here, but then, of course, with the vowel, you, we take away the e. En a acheté une. Ta femme t'en a acheté une. All right. And then, ils nous ont apporté des fruits. All right, same thing. Ils nous en ont apporté. All right, so nous first, then en, and after that you put your verb, so same rule here, it's composed, so you've got two parts, but still it's only one verb here. So let's read it, il nous en, okay, beautiful liaison here, <laughs> ont apporté, okay, so the full thing goes like, il nous en ont apporté. All right, so let's read it one more time, mon ami m'en a donné un, Ta femme t'en a acheté une, ils nous en ont apporté. All right. And then the last example we'll see with the future proche. So in that case, it will be quite interesting because we will have two verbs. Okay. So let's see. Mon ami va me donner un conseil. Okay. So exactly the same idea. We'll replace un conseil by en. And then we see how it goes. Mon ami va... All right, so here you've got this verb aller, all right, so the first verb here, and then you will put your pronouns, so me here, of course, e is going away, then you've got your pronoun en before the second verb, 
Okay, donate to give. That's the second verb here. Infinitive form, as usual in French, when we've got two verbs. So, mon ami va m'en donner un. All right. Ta femme va t'acheter une montre. Exactly the same rule. Ta femme va, so you've got first your verb here, then te, but then e is going away, en, and the second verb, acheter une. All right. Ils vont nous apporter des fruits. Ils vont nous en apporter. Okay, so that's the only thing that you should remember. So when you've got one verb, whether it's simple or composed, then it is before the verb. When you've got two verbs like here, so with this first aller, then your verb, so donner here, remember that your pronouns will come before the second verb. Okay, but then the order will stay the same. Les structures avec deux pronoms, and uh, if we are more precise, uh, if you've got one of these two pronouns, if it is le, la, or les, okay? So, we saw in the previous video the same concept, so when you've got two pronouns in the same sentence, but then one of them is en, okay? So, if you want to check it, then it is the previous uh, video, and then after that we'll see lui, leur, and we we'll finally will work with Y, okay? But then in that video, we'll work on le, la, ou les, okay? And then the rule is quite simple. If you've got first, me, te, nous, vous, they will come first, and after that, you will put le, la, and les, okay? That's the rule. If you've got le, la, and then les, it will come all the time after me, te, nous, and vous. Okay, let's see that more precisely. And so we'll work on présent, passé composé, because it's a composed tense, so it's quite interesting to see how you put this pronounce when you've got a composed tense. And then the futur proche, so this near future, so I am going to, like in, in English, so aller plus infinitif, okay? It's interesting because in that case you've got two verbs, so we'll see how you put your pronouns when you've got the structure, a sentence, with two verbs, okay? So let's start now with the présent. So, mon père me conseille ce livre. Mon père, my father, conseille to uh, advise or to recommend, in that case, ce livre, this book. So, we want to replace ce livre. We will put le. Okay, and as we saw for the rule, so, mon père, first me, then le, and after that, the word, uh, the verb, sorry. Mon père me le conseille. Okay, that's it. Quite simple, remember. Me first, then le, and then the verb. Second example. Tes amis, your friends, donnez to give, les clés, the keys. Okay? Tes amis nous donnent les clés. So, we want to replace les clés, so we should replace it with the plural form, so it's les, okay, here, les, and then remember, first nous, then les, and after that the verb. Tes amis nous les donnent. Okay? And the final Example, je me réserve, okay, so réserver to reserve, la place de parking, so the parking place, la place de parking, in that case, we don't want to use la place de parking, we want to replace it with a pronoun, so je me la réserve, okay, remember, first me, then la, and after that your verb. Okay, so it's quite simple, it's not really difficult, remember, uh, in that case, me, nous, me, here in the first place, then le, la for the feminine, les for the plural, second place, then the verb. Let's see how it will go with the passé composé form, so passé composé, as you can see it in its name, it's a composed tense, okay, so you've got two parts, first you've got avoir, then you've got here, participe passé. Okay, so, mon père m'a conseillé ce livre. Same thing, we don't want to use ce livre again, so we put the pronoun. Okay, so in that case, if you look carefully, then mon père me first place, 
then you should have le here because it's the masculine form but then you've got here a vowel after so e uh, needs to go away so you get elle apostrophe mon père me l'a conseillé all right then tes amis nous ont donné les clés so exactly the same sentence that we had previously at the present form but in that case it's the passé composé form okay tes amis nous les ont donné Okay, so same rule, first nous, then les, before, and then after that you put the verb here. So you can see that I've been putting in red the ending here, just to uh, remind you or uh, yeah, let you remember that we've got a rule in French. Normally when we make this passé composé form with avoir like that, and if you've got what we call complément d'objet direct before, you should put at the end of your participe passé form here, feminine if the word is feminine, so a, s if the word is plural, okay? In that case, we've got les clés. Les clés is feminine plural, so that's the reason why we will add first feminine and then plural here. Okay, so the good news is that you don't pronounce it, so donné, okay, so whether it would be without this final ES or with ES, you will pronounce it the same way. Tes amis nous les ont donné, okay? And then the last one, je me suis réservé la place de parking, je me first, then la, and after that suis réservé. Okay, so it doesn't really change that much if you think first me or then nous as we saw, then le or then la and les, and after that you put your verb, even if in that case it's a composed verb, it doesn't change anything, you just put it before. Okay, so let's see now how it will work with future proche, so structure with two verbs. So, same example, mon père va me conseiller ce livre. And now you can see something interesting. You can see that me and le will be placed before the second verb. Okay? So, mon père va, so you put first your verb, me le conseiller. Alright? So, keep in mind that me and le should be before the second verb. Tes amis vont nous donner les clés. Tes amis vont nous les donner. Je vais me réserver la place de parking. Je vais me la réserver. Alright, so the rule goes like that. Me, nous, me. So as here, we saw first place, then le, la, les, second place. Alright, and after that, your second verb. Le présent. Continue. So le présent continue, it's an uh, interesting structure because it's uh, the kind of structure that you can use if you want to insist on the fact that an action or something, a process is continuing at the time when you are uh, speaking or talking. Okay. And the way to construct this is to use first this expression, être en train de, so you can see that here we've got the verb, être, to be, Okay, and this structure should be obviously at the present time. Okay, and the no, not the present time, sorry, but the present tense. All right, so you should conjugate your verb être here at the present. Okay, then you will put the verb that you want to use in your structure. This verb should be at the infinitive form, so the basic form of the verb. Okay, so and it will give you this présent continu. Okay, so let's see a few examples. First, je suis en train de faire mes devoirs. Okay, faire is to do, and then mes devoirs, my homework, alright? And then when you, when you use this, je suis en train de, okay? So you want to insist on the fact that at the time when you are talking, the, the, the process is taking place, okay? And it, it continues, and that's the whole concept of it. So, je suis en train de faire mes devoirs, all right? Second example that we've got, so same thing here. Tu es en train de regarder un film, okay? So, same thing, regarder or to watch, un film, a movie. So, 
the action is taking place and of course it continues if you use this en train de okay but then remember that you've got to put here the verb être at the present form for tu tu es okay so you need to conjugate it and then elle est en train de réparer so to repair son vélo her bike elle est en train de réparer son vélo all right so same thing it's continuing it's taking place at the time when you are talking and the last one il est en train de préparer le petit déjeuner préparer to prepare le petit déjeuner breakfast okay so il est en train de préparer le petit déjeuner okay so at the time when you are talking he's doing it right now and the process is continuing okay so let's read them one more time je suis en train de faire mes devoirs tu es en train de regarder un film elle est en train de réparer son vélo il est en train de préparer le petit déjeuner okay so that's what we call le présent continue but then if you think about that well it would be possible to transpose that at the past as well why not so let's call it le passé continue and it's possible because well the idea is that you just use the same same structure être en train de okay but think about that because we've been covering the past tenses already and it would be a bit strange to use this passé composé tense because normally we tend to use this passé composé when we want to express actions okay but then in that case imparfait would be more appropriate okay so if you want to use this passé continu concept then use être en train de and you use this imparfait okay then same idea you put your verb at the infinitive form and you will get this passé continu okay so you know what we'll take exactly the same sentences that we had uh, as examples for the, the present but we just put them at the passé and here we go j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs so as you can see the only thing that will change in this structure is être okay because in that case you should put it at the imparfait form j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs tu étais en train de regarder un film elle était en train de réparer son vélo il était en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. All right. So, the only thing that will change here, here and here, it's the verb être that you should put at the imparfait form. All right. And in the same logic, we could put this structure at the future as well. Why not? So, le futur continue. And in that case, exactly the same structure so être en train de but then obviously so être should be at the future form okay so the real one and then the infinitive form just to get this future continue okay same example same sentences so je serai en train de faire mes devoirs tu seras en train de regarder un film elle sera en train de réparer son vélo. Il sera en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Okay, so as you can see, the only thing that will change here is the verb être. So it should be at the future, future simple form. So the real future. Okay, here, here and here. Okay, le passé récent like the recent past if you want to translate it directly so le passé récent is a uh, like a false or a fake tense that we've got because technically it's the present tense but then if you want to express something that you just did okay so we've got a tense for that and it's quite useful and quite easy to make because the concept is that first you will use the verb venir and the preposition de okay so venir is to come venir de so this should be at the present tense and then you will put your verb at the infinitive form okay and you will get what we call le passé 
récent. Ok, so it's a technique just to express something yet that you just did. Ok, uh, so it's not possible to use this passé récent, of course, for last week or uh, uh, the month before, it's not possible. Ok, so it's really something that is somehow connected to the present. So, present, something that you just did. Ok, so of course, if you want to make it, you should know the conjugation of venir by heart. If that's not the case, then don't worry, here it comes. So, at the present tense, It's je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient, nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. All right, so let's see that one more time. Je viens. Final S not pronounced, ok? And when you combine this EON, you get this YEN, YEN. Je viens, alright? Tu viens, well, exactly the same thing. Final S not pronounced, and then you get this YEN sound, alright? Then il vient, exactly the same sound, because final T here is not pronounced. Elle vient, alright? Nous venons, ok? So final S not pronounced, and then remember that you pronounce this E like a the, the non, okay, O-N in your nose, on, the non, nous venons, all right, vous venez, okay, so a Z at the end combined will give you the sound A, and here you get a, venez, vous venez, all right, and then il vienne, so remember as usual in French when we talk about conjugation, E N T at the end you don't pronounce it here, and then you get this E uh, here followed by this double N, so double consonant here. So when they are identical, they will open the sound of this E. Uh, so you will get it, and it will be produced like E. Okay, so vien, vien. Okay, don't insist on this N. No, no. vien. Vien, ok? Ils viennent, elles viennent. Alright? So remember, je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient. Nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. So this is the first part that you should use to make this passé récent. Ok? And remember, after that you put this preposition de plus your verb at the infinitive. So let's see a few examples now. And the first one, je viens de discuter avec ma sœur. Okay, discuter to discuss avec with my sister, ma sœur. Je viens de discuter avec ma sœur. Okay, something that just happened. All right, and then same thing here. Tu viens de boire un verre de lait. Un, uh, sorry, boire to drink, un verre glace. De lait of milk. D'accord? Tu viens de boire un verre de lait. Same thing here. It just happened. Elle vient de gagner le match. Gagner is to win. Le match, obviously, the match. Elle vient de gagner le match. And the last one. Nous venons de déjeuner. Ok? Déjeuner here. So when you have your lunch, ok? Nous venons de déjeuner. All right. So, je viens de discuter avec ma sœur. Tu viens de boire un verre de lait. Elle vient de gagner le match. Nous venons de déjeuner. All right. So, keep in mind, venir at the present form, as we see here, and then the preposition, la préposition de, and your verb at the infinitive form and then you get this passé récent something that you just did okay le futur proche so if you want to translate this futur proche directly it would be like the near future so technically it is uh, one way that we've got to express the future but then we keep a structure that is conjugated at the present tense okay and so to make it We'll see it right now. First, we need to use the verb aller. Aller is to go, okay? And, well, this verb aller should be at the present tense. 
Then you will put your verb. Your verb should be at the infinitive, so the basic form of the verb. Then you will get this futur proche structure. Okay, so it is like like in English, for instance, when you say I am going to something, that exactly it is exactly the same structure. Okay, express something that you want to do or you are going to do. Okay, but still it will be at the present tense. Okay, so the the only thing that really you should remember and know by heart is the verb aller at the present tense. If you don't remember it, well, don't worry, it is coming right now. Je vais, tu vas, il va, elle va, nous allons, vous allez, ils vont, elles vont. Okay, so this is the verb aller at the present tense. Okay, let's see it one more time. Je vais. Final S not pronounced here, and remember when you combine this A and E together, you get the sound A, so really open. Je vais. Tu vas. Final S not pronounced. Tu vas. Il va. Elle va. Nous allons. Remember, final S not pronounced. O and together, it's on. And then we'll make this little link between the two what we call the liaison, nous allons, okay, then, vous allez, remember, a Z at the end here, will give you this A sound, okay, allez, and then, as previously, this little link between the two, liaison, vous allez, right, then, ils vont, final T, not pronounced, and then, O and together, on, vont, okay, Ils vont, elles vont. All right, so one more time. Je vais, tu vas, il va, elle va, nous allons, vous allez, ils vont, elles vont. Okay, so that's the only thing that really you should modify or conjugate because after that you will put your verb at the infinitive form. So let's see a few examples now. And the first one, je vais sortir ce soir. Sortir is to go out ce soir, this evening. Okay, so I am going to go out, sounds strange in English, this evening. Okay, in French, well, it's well quite possible here. Je vais sortir ce soir. Then, elle va apporter un gâteau. Apporter is to bring un gâteau, a cake. Elle va apporter un gâteau. Okay. And after that, nous allons faire du café. Faire is to do, or in that case it could be to prepare. Du café, some coffee. Nous allons faire du café. Okay. Vous allez partir en vacances. Partir is to go en vacances, on vacation. And here you can see that at the end, we've got this point d'interrogation. So it means that it's a question. And if it's a question, we should raise the voice a little bit at the end. So let's repeat it. Vous allez partir en vacances? Okay, so I tend to insist a little bit, but still, that's the idea. You should raise your voice a little bit at the end just to inform the person that it's a question, okay? Vous allez partir en vacances? Vous allez partir en vacances? Okay, so you can hear it. First, je vais sortir ce soir. Then, elle va apporter un gâteau. Nous allons faire du café. Vous allez partir en vacances? Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 9, Leçon D. And in this lesson we'll discover together what we call in French le futur antérieur. So le futur antérieur is a tense, okay? So I thought it might be useful to introduce it right now because we've been covering quite many tenses so far and this one is quite useful. So the whole I mean, the way we will construct this uh, video is uh, first we'll see uh, l'utilisation. So when do we use this uh, futur antérieur? And then the second part will be la formation. So how do we construct? How do we build this uh, this tense? Okay. So the first part will be l'utilisation. When do we use it? And so the main or well, the only concept uh, of this uh, futur antérieur is that that it will be used to express what we call 
le passé dans le futur. So, the past in the future. So, I know it might sound a bit strange, but still, it does exist in other languages, for instance, English. So, you will see that if you compare it to English, it's almost the same thing and the same construction. Okay, so let's first see. So, if we are here, Okay, this is the timeline. So if we are here, normally if we want to express what is happening right now, we will use the present tense, so le présent here, okay? And then if we want to talk about the future, then we'll use this futur simple, for instance, so the tense we've been seeing uh, previously, okay? And if we want to talk about what happened before, so it's still, if you look carefully, it's still the future for us because we are here it's the it's the present right now so it's still the future but you want to really go that way first the future then the past so in a way it's the past in the future all right so if it's not clear so far let's see one example at the future form so if we want to use this faire faire is to do je ferai mes devoirs, mes devoirs, my homework, okay? So this is the sentence at the future form. Je ferai mes devoirs, okay? And if we've got the same sentence, but at the future antérieur, so it will be like, j'aurais fait mes devoirs, okay? So if we, you want to translate it directly, see, I will do my homework, and then here, I will have done my homework. So if you feel the difference in English between the two sentences, well it's exactly the same thing in French. Okay? So strangely, if you say je ferai mes devoirs here, it's the future. Okay? But then if you use the same structure at this future antérieur, I will have done my homework, then you've got the feeling that of course it's the future, but in a way it's done already. Okay? So it's more certain with this sentence. And it, it's exactly the same use that we will have in French as uh, it is used in, um, in English. Okay? So now, second part, formation. So let's have a look now. First sentence, so it's the, the real future. Je mangerai au restaurant. Okay? And then here we've got j'aurai mangé au restaurant. So this second part is the future antérieur. So if we take the, the time to look a little bit here, we can see that we've got first avoir, okay, at the future. And here we've got this participe passé form that we saw previously, okay. Second example, if we take the sentence, tu regarderas, regardez, is to watch, la télévision, okay. Tu auras regardé la télévision. So this is the same structure at the future antérieur. What can we see? We can see avoir one more time and it's at the future tense. And then here we can see that we've got the participe passé form. Okay. So third example. Il ira. Ira. So it's coming from aller. Okay. Aller is to go. Au travail. At work. And then here. Il sera aller au travail. So we can see that here we've got être and then we've got the participe passé form here. Okay, so what can we deduct? Here we've got avoir, participe passé, avoir, participe passé, être, participe passé. So the rule is like that in most of the cases. If you want to construct this future antérieur form, first you will have for most of the verbs Avoir, and it should be at the future form, and then the participe passé form, and you will get your future antérieur. In some cases, you will have to use être at the future form, so le futur, then your participe passé form, and you will get the, the future antérieur form. All right. So if you saw the previous videos that we've been doing for other composed tenses in French, like passé composé, plus que parfait, etc. Well, it is exactly the same way to construct it. It's, the only difference is here. Okay? So, if you use avoir for one verb 
at the passé composé form, for instance, you will use avoir as well at the future anterior. The only thing that will change is that for this future anterior form, it will be here, the future. Okay, and if you use être for some verbs or one verb at the passé composé, it will be exactly the same thing, but keep in mind that here it should be at the future form. Okay, so remember that for être we've got aller, aller is to go, arriver, arriver to arrive, descendre, to go down, devenir, to become, entrer, to enter, to come in, Monter, to go up, mourir, to die, naître, born, partir, to leave, rester, to stay, retourner, to return, sortir, to go out, tomber, to fall, and then venir, to come. Okay, so keep in mind that all these verbs will require être. Okay? And then, when we talk about être, of course, as usual in French, for these composed tenses, all the reflexive verbs like se something, okay? So, se regarder, for instance, or then s'appeler, or then se présenter. So, they will all the time require être, okay? And we will see in that video that, of course, the way to conjugate them will be a little bit different, okay? But then, of course, let's see one more time. Avoir and être at the future form, because that's the first part you will have to use if you want to construct this future antérieur. And avoir at the future form goes like j'aurai, tu auras, il aura, elle aura, nous aurons, vous aurez, ils auront, elles auront. Okay, so one more time. J'aurai, remember, A and O together will produce this O sound. A and E, E. Aurai. Alright, then tu auras. Final S not pronounced. Aura. Il aura, elle aura. Okay, nous aurons. Final S not pronounced. O and N together, nasal. On. A, U, O. Auront, all right, and then if you want to make this beautiful link, the little liaison between the two, it would be perfect. Nous aurons, okay. Here, same thing here. Vous aurez, all right. O and then a Z at the end will give you this A sound. Aurez, all right, and then this little link, this little liaison between the two. Vous aurez, okay. Then il auront, final T not pronounced, O and together, on, auront, okay, and then the link between the two, ils auront, elles auront, all right, so, j'aurai, tu auras, il aura, elle aura, nous aurons, vous aurez, ils auront, elles auront, all right, then now for être, je serai, tu seras, il sera, elle sera, nous serons, vous serez, ils seront, elles seront. All right, so let's see it one more time. Keep in mind that when we've got a like that, you really pronounce it e. Uh, so, serait, okay? I together, e. Serait. Okay, the first S is quite strong. Uh, se, serait. All right, then, tu seras. Final S not pronounced. Tu seras, il sera, elle sera, nous serons, so final S not pronounced, then O, N, on, serons, vous serez, a Z together at the end, et, serez, alright, ils seront, final T not pronounced, and then you get this nasal, on, seront, elles seront, alright, so one more time, je serai, tu seras, il sera, elle sera, nous serons, vous serez, ils seront, elles seront. Alright. 
So remember that the second part should be what we call this participe passé form. I've been making a big, big, big video concerning the par participe passé. So if you really want to work on that, uh, it is it, it will be more um, uh, full of examples. Okay, uh, right now here in this video, I will only cover first here as we've got. The first group, so regular, ending with a R, and it's quite easy because it will become E, like that. Okay, so parler, a R, will become parler, your participe passé form. Regarder, ending with a R here, regarder, a accent aigu. Okay, and even this aller verb, so it doesn't belong to the first group because it's quite tricky when you come to, to conjugate it, but even this one is quite easy for this participe passé form because it's a accent aigu like that, okay? So all these verbs from the first group will become parler, regarder, aller, so like that for the participe passé form, okay? Verbs from the second group, so ir, remember, not all the ER verbs uh, belong to the second group, so be be careful. And so, examples like choisir, and it will become choisi, finir, fini, unir, uni. All right, so all these verbs will become like that, choisi, fini, uni. So this is the participe passé form, so the second part that you should put in your futur antérieur. Okay, so let's see now the third group. So it's a tricky, tricky group. So as I said, I've been making a video and uh, you, you've got more examples, but still. So main subcategories, if you want, in a way. So the one that will end with U. So like here and here. So connaître, connu. Connaître is to know. Voir, to see, vu. Okay, then ending with I. Partir, to leave, parti. Rire, to laugh, ri, then the one ending with i, t, écrire, to write, écrit, dire, to say, di, okay, and the one ending with i, s, mettre, to put, mi, and then prendre, to take, pri, all right. An example now with parler. J'aurai parlé, tu auras parlé. Il aura parlé, elle aura parlé, nous aurons parlé, vous aurez parlé, ils auront parlé, elles auront parlé. All right, so as we saw, first you've got this avoir at the future form, then you've got your participe passé here, okay aura, then participe passé, etc. So I wanted to put this a accent aigu like that, just to show you that in a normal structure. So when you've got your subject and then your verb, okay, and if you conjugate it, it with avoir, so it will be exactly the same rule as we had for all the compost tenses in French. You don't need to put anything at the end of your participe passé form if the structure is simple like subject and verb, all right? But if we conjugate it with être, like it is here the case with aller, aller is to go, remember, and it requires être. So what you can see it that it's that il sera allé here, you've got the masculine and singular form, so you will put this uh, accent aigu like that without anything. But if you've got here the feminine form, elle sera allée, you will have to add this mark of the feminine at the end of your participe passé form. Okay? You don't pronounce it, but still you need to write it. Okay? So remember a uh, mark of the feminine singular. If you've got the plural, like it's the case here, here, ils seront allés et s, like that. So you'll put this s, you don't pronounce it, but still you need to put it. Okay? Elles seront allées. Here you've got the feminine form and it's the plural, so you've got this e uh, mark of the feminine, then you've got this s mark of the plural. 
same thing here you don't pronounce it but you need to write it okay so let's read them il sera allé elle sera allé ils seront allés elles seront allées all right so let's see now how it go for the full thing so je serai allé okay so i did put this uh like that just to make it possible to put the feminine all right tu seras allé il sera allé elle sera allé nous serons allés vous serez allés ils seront allés elles seront allés okay so one more time je serai allé tu seras allé il sera allé elle sera allée nous serons allés vous serez allés ils seront allés elles seront allés and now we saw at the beginning of this video that all the reflexive verbs require as well être okay but then remember that the conjugation it is a bit bit more tricky because you've got to use these meute etc so let's see how they go when you put them at the futur antérieur okay so je me serai présenté tu te seras présenté il se sera présenté elle se sera présenté nous nous serons présentés vous vous serez présenté ils se seront présentés elles se seront présentées Okay, so you can see that as we conjugate these verbs with être, well, it will respect exactly the same rules. So we've got to put a uh, as the mark of the feminine when needed, s mark of the plural when needed. Here we've got nous, so it's the plural, vous as well. Okay, and then a uh, s like for here, elle, so feminine plural, so a uh, and s, a uh, for the feminine, s for the plural. Okay, so let's read them one more time. Je me serai présenté, tu te seras présenté, il se sera présenté, elle se sera présenté, nous nous serons présentés, vous vous serez présenté, ils se seront présentés, elles se seront présentées. So, keep in mind that if you want to construct this future anterior, it should be first avoir at the future form, then your participe passé, and you will get a beautiful future anterior. In some cases, être au futur plus participe passé, and then you will get your future anterior. I hope it was clear. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier, and then more material can be found at this address, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Les articles à la forme négative. Because it can be tricky in some cases and I have been, I have been students who have been asking me are they transformed, do they stay the same if you put the sentence at the negative form. So that's what we'll see in this lesson. Okay, so we'll see first the indéfini and the partitive. Okay, so les indéfini et les partitifs. All right, so indéfini, it would be translated as um, a in English, okay? And then the partitive, some, something, all right? And then we will work on les articles définis, so the in English, okay? So, but then first, let's see indéfini et partitif, okay? So, let's see the example for the article indéfini at the masculine form, like un, for instance. And then let's see how it goes. Il a un chien. Okay, un chien, a dog. And here we've got the verb avoir. Okay, il a un chien. So a dog. Okay, so keep in mind that if you want to transform this sentence at the negative form, then il n'a pas de chien. So you can see that un here will become de here. All right, so that's the first thing that you've got to keep in mind if you want to use these articles, so article indéfini, and you want to put the sentence like in that case at the negative form, then un will become de. Okay, so let's see the example for the feminine form now. Une. Il y a, il y a, there is, remember, 
une manifestation, manifestation, demonstration, il y a une manifestation. So if we want to put this sentence at the negative form, il n'y a pas de manifestation. So you can see that this article, une, becomes de at the negative form. All right. So what about the plural now? Des, and then, j'achète des lunettes. Je n'achète pas de lunettes. Okay? Des lunettes, glasses. Acheter, to buy. J'achète des lunettes. So you can see that it will be exactly the same rule. So des becomes de. Okay? So what we've got here, un is becoming de, then une is becoming de, and after that you've got des, and it's becoming de as well. Okay? And this is for what we call les articles indéfinis, so a uh, in English, okay? And then let's see now for the part, les partitifs, okay? So if you want to introduce this some, something, <laughs> concept, let's see now. Je bois du café. Boire is to drink, and then when you've got this du café, well, really it's some coffee. You don't specify the quantity, so it's really what we call Partitif, okay? Je bois du café. So this is the masculine form here, du. And if you look carefully, negative form, je ne bois pas de café. So you can see that du is becoming de at the negative form, all right? Second example, de la, okay? So it's for the feminine form. Elle prend Prendre is to take de la tarte. Tarte is pie. Some, okay, would be this de la. De la tarte. Negative form, elle ne prend pas de tarte. So you can see that this de la will become de at the negative form. All right? So what can we say if we've got un, une, or then de? So what we saw previously, so this indéfini, article indéfini, or then if we've got du, de l, or de la, as we saw previously, so what we call les partitifs, okay, if you want to put, well, them in a sentence, and the sentence it's, is at the negative form, then you will not use them, but instead you will use de, or the apostrophe, if you've got a word with a vowel after, or the sound of a vowel. Okay, that's really something quite important, and you should try to remember this rule because it is quite useful, especially because we use, we tend to use quite often, I mean, negative forms, I mean, it's not really, really rare. Okay, so it is one main rule that you should keep in mind. But of course, in French, We've got exceptions, uh, and the exception is this structure or this uh, form that we've got, c'est, it is, or this is, okay? So when we use this c'est, we'll see a few examples now, here, c'est un champion, okay? Un champion, a champion, so c'est, this is, it is, un champion. Okay, and if you want to, well, put the same sentence at the negative form, well, look, ce n'est pas un champion. So, you will keep your article as you had previously here, un, un, it doesn't change. Feminine form, c'est une amie, okay, negative form, ce n'est pas une amie. Feminine, it's exactly the same rule, so une will stay here. You don't modify it. And for the plural, ce sont des produits naturels. Okay, produits, products, naturel, natural. Ce ne sont pas des produits naturels. All right, so what can we say about that? Oh, sorry, we've got, yeah, we've got the, the, the partitive as well. So, du, so same thing, c'est du chocolat noir, okay? 
chocolate and then noir it's black so dark if you want c'est du chocolat noir okay négation ce n'est pas du chocolat noir okay so here we've got the partitive and it's still the same here du and du okay so partitive féminin c'est de la vanille ce n'est pas de la vanille so de la is here and it's still here for the negative form okay vanille vanilla all right so now we can have the rule so when we've got un une and then des so what we saw les articles indéfinis or then if we've got du de le or de la okay so in that case it's the partitive remember that if you use them with se at the negative form they will stay exactly the same okay so that's the main rule that you've got to keep in mind with these articles so indefini or then with a partitive if you use them in normal structures then they will change and they will become de or de apostrophe as we saw previously but if you use these articles or then the partitive with se in that case they don't change when you put them at the negative form okay so now we'll see the definite so les, les articles définis okay and so we've got for the masculine le okay so it's the equivalent as at uh, the in english but then we've got the difference between the masculine the feminine and the plural so le have a look at this je prends le train okay prendre is to take le train the train okay je ne prends pas le train okay so the article doesn't change at all you just put it back even if it's the, the negative form it doesn't change okay so feminine elle aime la musique it means to like or to love okay elle aime la musique the music elle n'aime pas la musique it doesn't change at all les plural form nous détestons les olives noires okay détester to hate okay olives and then noir black nous détestons les olives noires negative form nous ne détestons pas les olives noires okay in that case it doesn't change so you can see le doesn't change la doesn't change and les doesn't change either all right so the rule is quite simple if you've got in your structures le la or les and you want to have this structure at the negative form then they will stay exactly the same they won't change bonjour à tous and welcome to learn french with vincent this is unité 9 leçon f and in this lesson we'll discover together 108 adjectives okay so the list will be long but still they are quite useful so get ready we're starting right now fâché okay so remember that here even if you you've got this uh, accent circonflex on the top of a well technically it doesn't really change the pronunciation fâché fâcheux so final x not pronounced and then you get your combination of e u e fâcheux endormi remember e n en endormi attractif réveillé okay i double l y -y, réveillé horrible okay first letter is h but then we don't pronounce h so you don't pronounce it and the first thing you hear is o horrible meilleur okay same thing here i double l y -y, meilleur mieux final x not pronounced grand final d not pronounced ennuyé okay so first en then nuit then yé ennuyé ennuyeux okay final x not pronounced and then the same concept en nuit Ennuyeux. 
courageux. Final X not pronounced. And then you've got this uh, U, E, and G plus, plus E. After that, it's je. So, je. Okay? Courageux. Courageux. Génial. Calme. So don't insist on the final E. Calme. Joyeux. Final X not pronounced and then joyeux. Okay? Joyeux. Joyeux. Nuageux. Final X not pronounced and then G -E -U, je. Nuageux. Correct. Dangereux. Okay, so final X not pronounced and then don't really pronounce this uh, here. Dangereux. 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 Décidé. Malhonnête. Okay, remember, H doesn't exist, so malhonnête. Don't insist on the final E. Malhonnête. And here you get E accent circonflexe, so you pronounce it like E. Malhonnête. Désorganisé. Affreux. Final X not pronounced. And then you get this FR. Freux. Affreux. Ennuyeux. Okay, final X not pronounced, and then ennuyeux ennuyeux facile excellent okay you get double l here and then it will open the sound of your e here and it will be e excellent excellent excité Passionnant. Okay, here you pronounce the double S because you've got a vowel vowel, so it's really a strong one. Pass. Passionnant. Final T not pronounced. And then here you get this en sound. Passionnant. Cher. Blond. Final D not pronounced. Célèbre. Okay, first you've got this E. Then here you get the E, so célèbre. Final E, not really pronounced. Rapide. Favori. Final. Bien. Okay, so remember, when you get this combination of E, E, N, you get the sound YEN. Bien, ok, and then B. Bien. En forme. Brumeux. Ok, final X not pronounced, so you get this E, and then U. Brumeux. Brumeux. Free. Final T not pronounced. Free. Amical. Effrayé. Ok, remember, double F, so you open the E, so E, effrayé. And here you get this, frayé, effrayé. Effrayant. Final T not pronounced, effrayant. Amusant. Final T not pronounced. You get only one S here between the vowels, so it's really this Z sound. A, mu, Zan. Amusant. Plus loin. Beau. Ok, so remember, we've got this strange combination of vowels. E, A, U, so three vowels, but then phonetically it's only O. Ok, so beau. Grillé. Ok, at the end you've got this and then remember double L after E, y, y, grillé, grillé. Beau, one more time. 
dur. Travailleur. OK, remember, double L, y, -y and then E, U, R, er. Tra, va, -yeur. Travailleur. Saint. OK, combination of A, I, N, phonetically will give you this un pronunciation. Saint. Lourd. Final D, not pronounced. Honnête. Chaud. Final D not pronounced. And then when you combine this C and H, you get the sh sound. A and U, O. Chaud. Important. Final D not pronounced. Intelligent. Final D not pronounced. Intéressé. Intéressant, final T, not pronounced. Gentil, so it's a strange one because here this final L is not pronounced, ok? Gentil, gentil. Tard, final D, not pronounced. Paresseux, final X, not pronounced. Cuir. Seul. Joli. Chanceux. Final X not pronounced. And then remember, C, E, U will give you this S sound. Chanceux. Chanceux. Fou. Combination of O and U. Ou. Fou. D'âge mûr. Misérable. Ok. Don't insist on the final E uh, here. You get this, this bl, bl sound at the end. Ok. Mi, zé, et because you've got this accent, accent aigu. Rable. Misérable. Nécessaire. Don't insist on the final E. Uh, nécessaire. Nerveux, final X not pronounced. Nouveau, remember combination of E, A and U together, it's O, so you get nouveau, ok? Agréable, don't insist on the final E, bl, agréable, agréable. Normal. Ordinaire. Don't, it, don't insist on the final E. Ordinaire. Organisé. E accent aigu. Et. Organisé. Obèse. Remember, E accent grave. Et. Obèse. Don't insist on the final E. Parfait. Final T not pronounced. Parfait, parfait. Pauvre. A, U together will produce this O sound. Pauvre. Populaire. Populaire. Don't insist on the final E. Populaire. Rapide. So same thing for final E. Don't insist on it. Just pronounce this D. Rapide. Silencieux. Final X not pronounced. Okay. This part here will be pronounced like cieux. Okay. Then you get si silencieux. Silencieux. Prêt. Final T not pronounced. E accent circonflex like that phonetically gives you the E sound. Prêt. Détendu. E accent aigu. E. And then E N en détendu. Riche. Final E, not really pronounced, so sh is the last sound. Riche. 
mal poli. Sur. Accent circonflexe on the top of U. Sur. Cour. Final T not pronounced. Cour. Remember, when you combine this O and U together, you get the sound de OU. Cour. Similaire. Final E not pronounced. Si. Mi. L'air. Petit. Ok, remember to pronounce this E like a E. Pe. T. Final T not pronounced. Petit. Réussi. Ok, first you get this E, then U, and double S, so really strong S, and E. Réussi. Réussi. Ensoleillé. Remember, double L after E. Ye, ye, ye. Ensoleillé. Sûr. Talentueux. Final X not pronounced. Then you get this E, U together. E, then T, U, tueux. Talentueux. Talentueux. Terrible. Terrifié. Fatigué. Okay, remember when you combine this G, U and E, you will get the G, okay? But in that case, you get the accent, so it's G, all right? Fatigué. Fatigué. Fatigant. Okay, remember when you get G and A, you don't need to put the U between because when you combine these two letters you get the sound g g so ga okay in that case you've got a n so it's gant final t not pronounced fa ti gant fatigant moche don't insist on the final e then you get the last sound is sh moche Antipathique. So remember, this H doesn't exist phonetically, so antipathique. Okay, final E, not pronounced. Antipathique. Malheureux. H doesn't exist, okay, so you get mal, e, re, final X not pronounced. Malheureux. Malsain. A, I, N together, it's a nasal and it's un. Malsain. Méchant. Final T not pronounced. Then C, H, Ch, chant. Méchant. Inhabituel. Utile. Chaud. Final D not pronounced. Venteux, final X not pronounced, then E N en venteux. Pire, final E not pronounced, so R at the end, pire. Faux, okay, final X not pronounced, then you get this A U together, O, faux. Jeune, final E not pronounced, but then E U together, E. Jeune, jeune. And that's it for this uh, first list of uh, adjectives. There was a mistake. Uh, I didn't want to stop because uh, I was uh, <laughs> continuing. But there is uh, one word in the list that is not, um, of course, an adjective. And it was leather, cuir. Okay, so probably you did correct that on your own. But then I didn't want to stop because I was <laughs> in a good mood. Okay, if you want more videos, uh, youtube.com slash imagier. And then the website is here, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. And we'll see approximately 100 adjectives in the uh, following lesson. So the idea is to give you as many adjectives as possible at this time of your learning process because I think it's important now. Okay, so we'll start right now. Accidentel. Vivant, final T not pronounced, vivant. Ancien, remember, A-N-A-N-C-I-E-N, 
ancien. En colère. E accent grave like that. Here you pronounce it. E. Colère. En colère. Large. Not insist on the final E. Large. Pieds nus. So final S here and then final S here is not pronounced. And then when you get this combination here, it's ye. Pieds. Okay, so you don't hear the D. Pieds nus. Ba, final S not pronounced. Génial. Décontracté. Okay, so you get an accent aigu here and here, so it's E, E. Décontracté. Okay, décontracté. En céramique. Okay, so remember this Q, U, E here will give you the sound K. Okay. Céramique, because you don't insist on the final E. Uh, céramique, alright? En céramique. Classique, okay? So exactly the same thing, you don't insist on the final E, uh, so you get K as the last sound. Classique. Côtier. Okay, so here you get this O, accent circonflexe, you tend to insist a little bit more on it, so it's a bit uh, lower. Co, co. Okay, côtier. Okay, I E R here, Y, Y, côtier. Froid, final day not pronounced. Froid. Commun. Okay, U N un. Commun, commun. Confiant, final day not pronounced. So I A N, yan, fiant. Confiant. Cruel. Okay, remember. Cruel. Cruel. Dangereux. Final X not pronounced. And then don't really pronounce this E uh, here. Okay, so you get dangereux. Dangereux. Mort. Final T not pronounced. O R or. Mort. Décoré. Ok, so, e accent aigu, E, e accent aigu, E, décoré. Décoré. Profond. Final day not pronounced. O, N, on. Profond. Individuel. Spectaculaire. Okay, so they don't insist on the final E, uh, so l'air, spectaculaire, spectaculaire. To, okay, final T not pronounced, and then this O accent circonflexe is a bit stronger than normally, so to, to, to. Agé, okay, uh, accent aigu here, E, agé. Âgé. Électronique. Ok, so, as we saw previously, Q, U, E at the end, K. Ok. Électronique. 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 Méchant. Final T not pronounced. C, H together, Ch. Méchant. Méchant. Excellent. Remember, double L and E before, it will open the E, so E, excellent, excellent. Passionnant, final T, not pronounced. Passionnant. Cher. À la mode, final E, not pronounced, à la mode. Rapide, final E not pronounced, so rapide, rapide. En forme, final E not pronounced, en forme. Évasé, remember, one S between two vowels, Z, évasé. 
courant. Final T not pronounced. A N en courant. Folk. Fragile. Okay, final A not pronounced. And then when you get this G and I, J. Gilles. Fragile. Amical. Effrayant. Okay, so final T not pronounced. And then you get effrayant ok effrayant gelé amusant final t not pronounced content final t not pronounced or so, uh, n en as well content content amical Dur. Utile. Final E not pronounced, so utile. Horrible. Okay, remember we don't pronounce H here. Horrible. Immense. Final E not pronounced, immense. Important. So final T not pronounced. And then remember, you get this EM, and after that it's a consonant, so it is here uh, nasal. Un, un, por, tant. Important. Indépendant. Final T not pronounced. Un, dé, pan, dans. Indépendant. Informel. Intelligent. Final T not pronounced, so G-E-N, Jean, okay, intelligent, double L, it opens the pronunciation of your E, so it's E, intelligent, intéressant, double S, same thing here, S, strong, and it opens the pronunciation of your E, intéressant, final T not pronounced, humain, remember, H is not pronounced A I N un humain en direct logique remember Q U E at the end K logique ba final S not pronounced à taille basse okay so basse final E not pronounced but then you pronounce the double S so S basse And then here you get the double L after your E, remember, ye ye ye, taille, a taille basse. Chanceux, final X not pronounced, this C-E-U, ce, chanceux, chanceux. Deluxe. Mathématique, remember, H doesn't exist, so, ma, t, ma, Remember, Q U E at the end, K. Mathématique. Médical. Mémorable. Don't insist on the final E. Mémorable. Négligé. Okay, a accent aigu here and here. E, E. Négligé. Négligé. D'âge mûr. Minimum. Nerveux. Final X not pronounced. E, U, E, V. Nerveux. Bruyant. Final T not pronounced. So you get bruyant. Ok. Bruyant. Bruyant. Hors ligne. Final E uh, here not pronounced, so ligne, and then here S is not pronounced, the final one, so or, and remember H doesn't exist, so or ligne. En ligne, okay, so here en, en ligne. En plein air, alright, so you've got this air here, and then we tend to make the liaison plein air, plein air, en plein air. 
douloureux. Remember, final X not pronounced, so you get this OU together, OU, douloureux. Douloureux. Populaire. Final U not pronounced, so populaire. Populaire. Psychologique. Okay, remember it's an exception here because you get this C-H-O. Normally we should pronounce it CHO, okay, but in that case we pronounce it CO. Psychologique. Remember, final Q-U-E like that. K. Psychologique. Silencieux. Final X not pronounced. Radioactif. Enregistré, okay, so here final E uh, with the accent, so E, okay, TR, E accent grave, c'est E uh, accent aigu, it's TRE, alright, so en re gis TRE, okay, but then you don't really insist on this E, uh, enregistré, enregistré, détendu, okay, so E, N, en, Détendu, détendu, renouvelable, look, renouvelable, remember, bl, bl, at the end, but then this E uh, here is not really pronounced, so, renouvelable, renouvelable, okay, it's a bit tricky, I know, but try, try your best, renouvelable. Romantique, remember, Q-U-E at the end, K, romantique. Royal, okay, so, same thing with this Y, royal, royal, royal. Sûr, effrayé, mitoyen. Okay, same thing with the Y that we end here with Ephraim Royal, Royal, sorry. So, mitoyen, mitoyen. Peu profond, final day not pronounced, peu profond. Mince, okay, mince. Irrité, droit. So final T, not pronounced. Stressé, okay, remember you get double S here, so you pronounce it really strong, well it's between two vowels. So C, alright, and then here you get this E before the double S, so it will open the pronunciation of the E, E, stressé, stressé. Stressant, okay, final T not pronounced, and then A, N, an. Stressant. Fort. Final T not pronounced. Réussi. Ok. Réussi. Réussi. Bronzé. So O N, on, and then Z. So we pronounce, pronounce like Z. Bronzé. Bronzé. Superstitieux. Okay, so final X not pronounced. Superstitieux. Okay, remember when we get this T after E and then E here. S. Superstitieux. Superstitieux. En mitoyenneté. Okay, so mitoyenneté. En mitoyenneté. Terrifiant, final T not pronounced, double R here, so it will open the pronunciation of your E, and then it will be E, terrifiant. Résistant, final T not pronounced, résistant. Tropical. Sous-marin, okay, so E-N here, un, rein. Marin, all right, and remember, sous, okay, final S not pronounced, so S-O-U, sous, 
sous-marin. Utile, final and not pronounced. Utile. Verbal. Visuel. Remember it's a here and l. Uel, uel. Visuel. So this would be a list of 120 adjectives. Okay. And uh, it will complete the whole adjective series that I wanted to introduce at this point of our learning process. Okay. So let's start now. Alarmant. Final T not pronounced. Ambitieux. Final X not pronounced. And then remember that you get this T, I, and then vowel, so C. Ambitieux. Ambitieux. Amusé. Okay. Uh, accent aigu at the end, so E. Z. Amusé. En colère. Okay, remember, uh, accent grave, E, and then R, okay, you don't insist on the E. Uh, colère, en colère. Artificiel. Athlétique, okay, remember that H doesn't exist, so at -t -i -q. remember, Q-U-E at the end, K. at -e Athlétique. Réveillé. Okay, so accent aigu here and here. So E, then you get E, I, E, and then double L, Y. Réveillé. Réveillé. Mal payé. Okay, remember when you get this Y and two vowels, so payé. Payé, mal payé. Irritable, don't insist on the final E. Aveugle, same thing, final E, not really present. So, aveugle, gl, aveugle. Bouillant, final T not pronounced. A and together, remember, nasal, en, okay. And then here you get bou. All right, and after that you get this yon, okay, bouillant, bouillant. Autoritaire, so final E, uh, not here. Autoritaire, autoritaire. Courageux, final X not pronounced. G, E, U together, they will give you this je, okay. Courageux, courageux. Large d'épaule, final S, not pronounced. Large, final E here, not pronounced. D'épaule. Enterré, okay, remember, uh, end together, nasal, en, and then you get this double R here, and it will open the sound of the E, uh, E, okay. Enterré, enterré. Epe, final S not pronounced, R, E together, E, 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 P, E, P. Calm, final E, not here. Stimulant, final T not pronounced, stimulant, stimulant. Circulaire, final E not pronounced, R, E together, it's E, okay, so R. Circulaire. Circulaire. Rasé de près. Final S not pronounced. Okay, so here you get the e accent grave. E, près. Okay, here e accent aigu. E, rasé. Rasé de près. Confiant. Okay, final T not pronounced. So O, N, ON. I A N Yan confiant confiant attentionné okay at the end you get this e accent aigu so E A tant so remember E N en tant sio né 
attentionné, contemporain, ok, so I N at the end, un, e M here, because it falls by a, a consonant here, you get this P, so it will be a nasal, so it will be en, and here another nasal on, contemporain, contemporain. Condamné. Okay, so it's really strange because this M here, well, technically it's not pronounced. Condamné. Okay, condamné. Effrayant. Okay, remember, final T not pronounced. Effrayant. Effrayant. Coupé court. Final T not pronounced. And here you get this E uh, accent aigu. Coupé Cour. Fâché. Remember, say an H together. Sh, sh. And then E, chez. Fâché. Cruel. Okay. U here. Cru. Cruel. Actuel. 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 Mignon. Okay, here in that case, G-N-O-N, nion, mignon. Sourd, final day not pronounced, O-U together, ou sourd. Ferme, okay, final E uh, not pronounced, ferme. Décoratif, okay, E uh, accent aigu, et déco Ratif, décoratif, déprimé, désert, ok, remember, final T not pronounced, désert, and really this z sound just because you get one S between the two vowels, ok, z, désert, décidé, ok, remember, accent aigu here and here, so A, Décidé. Décidé. Électronique. Ok, so, k at the end. Remember, q u -E at the end. K. Électronique. Électronique. Émouvant. Final T not pronounced. A and together. En. Émouvant. Émouvant. En voie d'extinction. En voie, final E not pronounced, d'extinction. Okay, remember, T-I-O-N, sion. Extinction. Extinction. En voie d'extinction. Énorme, final E not pronounced, énorme. Énorme. Entier. So remember, I-E-R, Y-E, -y -y, OK, and then the T, t -y, and the nasal before, en, entier. Éternel, OK, so E accent, e accent aigu, éternel, éternel. Épuisé, OK, remember, you get two E accent aigu, E, E, épuisé. Épuisé. Disparu. Fidèle. Final E, not pronounced. So, E, gra accent grave here. L, L. Fidèle. Fidèle. Fantastique. Ok. Q, U, E at the end. K. Ok. Tic. Fantastique. Fantastique. Fascinant, final T not pronounced, so you get this A N, en, non, fa, si, non. Imaginaire, final E not pronounced, I, ma, j, -ner. imaginaire. Étranger, okay, remember E, R at the end, E, So, after that, uh, well, before that, sorry, G, G, so, et, 
étranger, étranger. Glacial. Frustré. À temps complet. A, ok, so even if you've got an accent, it doesn't change the pronunciation of your A, ok, so it's A. And then temps, ok, so in that case, it's only the nasal here that you will hear, temps, ok, because the P is not pronounced and the S is not pronounced. Temps, and then complet, ok, here a T at the end will open it, uh, open, sorry, the sound of the, the E, so E, ok, plé, complet. Complet. And then OM is nasal here, just because you get your P after that. So it's on. Complet. À temps complet. À temps complet. Furieux. Okay, final X not pronounced. Furieux. Furieux. Génétique. Remember, K. Génétique. Coupable, final un not pronounced, coupable, coupable. Saint, all right, so final T not pronounced, and then when you combine this R-E-N here, you get the un sound, saint, saint. Honnête, so remember, H doesn't exist, honnête. Horrifié, same thing here, you don't pronounce the H, horrifié. Exalté, okay, so here, final E uh, with the accent, so E, exalté. Humain, remember, H doesn't exist, so U, then A, E, N together, un. Humain, humain. Hypnotique. Remember, at the end, Q, K, TIC. So, H is not pronounced. Hip, hip, no, TIC. Hypnotique. Illégal. Illogique. Remember, K, K, IC. Illogique. Ingénieux. Final X not pronounced, so... I E U I E N I E N G N I E ingénieux impatient okay remember final T not pronounced and then you get this T I and a vowel so sian sian un pas sian impatient impoli okay remember I e, M and then a consonant after so nasal un, impoli. Impossible. Don't insist on the final E. Impossible. Incroyable. Okay, same thing here for the final E. Don't pronounce it. So, incroyable. 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 Indépendant. Final T not pronounced. Pas cher. Informel. Insensible. Okay, final T not pronounced. Insensible. Insensible. Irrégulier. Okay, remember. I E R at the end of your word here it will be Y, ok? Irrégulier. Irrégulier. Irresponsable. Don't pronounce the final E. Bl, bl will be the last sound. Sable. Irresponsable. Légal. Deluxe. Final E not pronounced. Insignifiant, ok, final T not pronounced, so you get this I-A-N, IAN, so F before, FIAN, INSIGNI, ok, remember, G-N-I, NI, NI, INSIGNIFIANT, INSIGNIFIANT, 
mineur, e u r e r, mineur, mineur. Mythique, remember q u a d i n k, okay, and then y is pronounced like i, mi h is not pronounced, t i k, mythique. D'origine. Nomade, final e not pronounced. Officiel. Paranoïaque. Okay, remember. Q U E K A K. Paranoïaque. Paranoïaque. Pacifique. Q U E K I K. Pacifique. Potelé. Okay, here you don't really pronounce this e. Potelé. Potelé. Psychologique. Okay, remember at the end you get this k. Okay, so ik, and then y is pronounced like i. Psi, and then it's an exception here because normally we should pronounce it sho. Okay, but then we pronounce it ko. Psi, ko, lo, jik. Psychologique. Raisonnable. Remember i together e. Raisonnable. Distant, final T not pronounced, distant. Gratifiant, same thing here, final T not pronounced, gratifiant. Rhythmique, remember, Y pronounced like E and then H doesn't exist. Rhythmique, rhythmique. En ruine, don't pronounce the... Final E, ruine. Sacré, euh, accent aigu à the end, et sacré. Autosuffisant, final T not pronounced. Autosuffisant, autosuffisant. Sensé, final E, accent aigu, et sensé. Sensible, ok Final unpronounced, bl will be the last sound. Sensible. Similaire. So final e uh, not pronounced, okay. Si, mi, l'air. Mince. Final e uh, not pronounced. E and together, un. Mince. Lisse. Double S here, so it's really a strong S. Lis. Okay, don't insist on the final E. Lis. Stressant. Final T not pronounced. A and together. En. And then double S. Sans. And it will open the pronunciation of your E. So E. Stressant. Stressant. Chic. Okay, you pronounce the final C. And then CH together, ch, chic. De banlieue. Okay, final E not pronounced, so I, E, U, I, E, L, lieu. Banlieue, de banlieue. Très petit. Final T not pronounced, and then E is pronounced like a E. Petit. Très petit. Here, final S doesn't exist, it's not pronounced. Très petit. Très petit. Traditionnel. Ok, so you get double N here. Traditionnel. Onel, onel. Traditionnel. Transatlantique. Ok, so at the end, tic. Remember que u k Ok. Transatlantique. Transatlantique. Tribal, tropical, sans peur, ok, pronounce the final R, E, U, R, R, peur, sans peur, don't pronounce the final S here, sans peur, inconfortable, ok, pronounce final E, table, un, 
confortable. Inconfortable. Au chômage. Remember, CH together. Chaud, chômage. Au chômage. Malchanceux. Final X not pronounced. C-E-U, ce, mal, chanceux. Malchanceux. Peu utile. Final E not pronounced. Peu utile. Désagréable. Final E not pronounced. Bl at the end. Désagréable. Désagréable. Peu réaliste. Don't insist on the final E. Peu réaliste. Intact. Intact. Peu sûr. Affecté. Ondulé. Riche. Okay, remember, c'est H, E, Ch. So, Ch, normally, but then you don't insist on the final E, so, Ch. Riche. Solide. Same thing here, don't insist on the final E. Solide. Bien payé. Okay, remember, final E, accent aigu, E, okay. Payé. Payé. All right, payé. And then, I, E, N, yen. Bien payé. Bien payé. Les prépositions avec les articles. So it will be, actually, it will be the first step into this big, big, big thing that we will do concerning the preposition, les prépositions, because it's quite important in French. And then I thought it might be important to, well, work on them at this point of our uh, learning process. Okay, so first here in this video we'll work on a and then de and especially when you combine these two prepositions with articles. So we'll see first the indefinite, so les articles indéfinis, un, une, des, okay, and after that we'll see les articles définis, le, la, les. Okay, and especially we'll concentrate on the way uh, these prepositions will react in a way when they are combined with these articles. Okay, so the first one that we will we will uh, discover together will be a. Okay, and so we'll see avec les articles définis. So remember, les articles définis it would be translated in English as a something. Okay, but then in French we've got the difference between the masculine form, so it's un. The feminine form it's une, and the plural form it's de. Okay, so let's see now. I've been making few examples. So I did take this parler verb to talk because it's quite interesting. You can use it with the preposition a to talk to. Okay, and it's also possible to use it with the preposition de. Uh, to talk about something, okay? So that's the reason why I wanted to use this verb, just to show you that, well, basically it's possible to use two prepositions if you want to express something different, and then just to see how it will change if you put an article after that. So the first sentence, je parle à un homme, okay? Un homme, a man. Je parle à un homme, okay? I talk to a man. So in that case, what you can see is that you keep your preposition A here, right after the verb, and then you put your article and basically nothing happens. Okay? Je parle à un homme. So let's see an example with the feminine. Je parle à une femme. Okay? Une femme, a woman. Je parle à une femme. Same thing here. Nothing happens. So it's actually quite easy. And then, have a look here. Je parle à des amis. All right. Je parle à des amis. Same thing here. You've got your preposition and then you've got, you've got the article. So, un, masculin, une, des. Okay. So, the good news is that if you use this preposition à and after that you put this article indéfini, 
un, une, des, nothing will happen. No modification, no changes. You just keep them like that. Okay? Let's see now if you want to put this article défini. Okay? Remember, article défini, if you want to translate that in English, it would be the something. Okay? But then, as usual in French, we've got the difference between the masculine form, le, the feminine form, la, and the plural form, les. Okay? So remember, masculine, le, feminine, la, and then the plural, les. Okay, so let's have a look now. If we keep, well, the same verb, as I said, you know, je parle, parler, to talk. And in that case, you can have a look and you can see that it's been changing a little bit. Okay, so a plus le will become o, like that. You write it a, u, you pronounce it o. Okay, je parle o. Directeur, directeur, translation, director, okay? Je parle au directeur. Let's see the feminine form. Je parle à la directrice, okay? Directrice, director, but the feminine form, okay? Je parle à la directrice. So here you can see that, well, nothing happens, so you still have your preposition à, and then you've got your article here, okay? So nothing changes when you get the feminine form. And let's see the plural form now. So you get the directors, so it's the plural form. Je parle au directeur. Okay, so you can see that here you combine a plus les and you will get this a u x. Okay, and then phonetically you produce it or you pronounce it o. Okay, so here o masculine form, plural form. O as well. And for your information, it could be, so I did put this directeur here, okay? It could be directrice, so it could be the feminine plural. It wouldn't change anything because it will be still this O, okay? So it will be for the masculine or the feminine plural. It will be A, U, X, O, all right? So je parle au directeur, so here, for the masculine. Je parle à la directrice. Here for the feminine, je parle au directeur for the plural. All right, so if we want to make it clear, then we can say that a plus le will become o. Okay, then a plus la, well, will stay the same, a la, it doesn't change at all. And then a plus le will become o, a u x. But then remember that phonetically it's O. Okay, so that's the main thing that you should remember if we talk about this preposition A combined with the article, les articles définis here. Okay? And now let's have a look at DE. So exactly the same thing. We'll see how DE will react. So first, avec les articles indéfinis. Okay, so un, une, and then de. All right. So I took this parler again. Okay, so, but that, keep in mind that if we've got this parler and then we use the preposition de, then it's to talk about something. All right, so here, je parle d'un homme. All right, so normally we should have here de. Un homme. But, well, as you know, we, we've been seeing that quite often now. It's not a new thing. Remember that a uh, here will disappear and then you will put this little apostrophe. D'un homme. Okay? Je parle d'un homme. All right? But then the thing is that no major modification will be done because you just keep your de while the a uh, needs to disappear. But then still you've got your article. Okay. Je parle d'une personne. Okay. Une personne, a person. Je parle d'une personne. So exactly the same thing here. Nothing major happens. Only this E, uh, you know, disappear. But then that's the only thing that you should remember to do if you want to combine the two. All right. The tricky thing is here when you want to combine de and de. 
all right? Just because we think that it would sound strange to have this de, de, roman, okay? So the thing that will disappear will be the article, okay? So that's the reason why we get this je parle de roman, all right? So in that case, de will be taken away, all right? So remember, de plus un will become d'un, de plus une will become d'une, de plus de will become de, okay, so we will have to take this de away, all right, so let's see now how it will work if we combine it with les articles définis, so le, la and les, okay, as we saw previously, Let's see now the examples. The first one, je parle du voisin. Voisin, here it's the masculine form of the neighbor. Le voisin, okay, the neighbor. And what you can see here is, well, the results of the combination of de plus le, okay? It will become du, okay, for the masculine form. Je parle du voisin, okay? So I talk about the neighbor. So let's see now how it will go. So I kept this neighbor, but then here it's the feminine form, so it's la voisine, all right? And what you can see here, je parle de la voisine, well, it will stay the same. So you keep your preposition, de, and then you put your article, la, and you put your name, or your word, sorry, voisine, okay? Je parle de la voisine. Nothing happens here. And it's a good thing. And then for the plural, as we had for a, remember, well, for the masculine singer and the plural, changes will happen. So, je parle des voisins. Here we've got the plural form of voisins, so neighbors, all right? Je parle des voisins. So, remember, masculine, du, feminine, de la, and then the plural form, Plural, whether it's masculine or feminine, it will be the same, okay? So, de. Okay? So, let's write it like that. De plus le will become du. De plus la will stay the same. Nothing happens. De la. And then de plus le will become de. La préposition a. Okay, so in the previous lesson, I've been introducing the modification of this preposition a when it's combined with articles. Okay, so I would definitely uh, advise you to watch it if you didn't. Uh, and then in that lesson, we'll discover, well, the different uses of uh, la preposition a. And you'll see that <laughs> it's a long video. Why? Just because a could mean or could be translated in English with at, in, to, to, and then I explain you the reason why we've got this second to here, because it will be the from something to something, okay? So that's the main reason why we've got the, the two, uh, two twos. <laughs> and then it could be translated with on, and then other uh, meanings and other uh, uses of uh, this uh, preposition. Okay, so we'll start with at, if that's okay with you, and so. A few examples. The first one, so if you want to translate it with this at, would be il reste à la maison. Rester is to stay, okay, and in that case we would construct it with à, okay. Il reste, he stays, à la maison, at home, okay. Il reste à la maison. Second example, uh, we could use this conduire, okay, conduire is to drive, and then when you want to introduce the speed, okay, in that case it's 40 km heure, then you would use this a, okay, so at 40 km per hour. Je conduis à 40 km heure. Je conduis à 40 km heure, okay. And then the last example we could have for this at, it's for the price, like here, à 10 euros. Le prix, the price, est fixé, okay, à 10 euros. Okay, so in that case, it would be translated by this at, but then in that case, well, here, we would use this à in 
French. Ok, so, il reste à la maison. Je conduis à 40 km h Le prix est fixé à 10 euros. Ok, so, if you want to express this at concept for these uh, situations, then you will have to use this preposition à. Ok, so let's see now the second uh, category we will have and it will be this in concept. So, the first one, mon frère est au lit. Ok, mon frère, my brother, est, is, au lit, in bed. Lee is bed, ok. Mon frère est au lit. Second example, il est à la campagne. Campagne, country, countryside, ok. Il est à la campagne. Alright, so in that case, it will be used, I mean, we will use this preposition à. Ok. And then the last one, so if you want to introduce a town, ok, you want to use this habiter, habiter is to live, ok, j'habite à Paris. Alright, you can see we don't put any articles, just the name of the town. J'habite, I live in Paris, j'habite à Paris. Alright, so, mon frère est au lit, il est à la campagne, j'habite à Paris. Ok, so if you want to... Well, translate uh, this in concept that would be in English, then it should be a with, as we saw the combination with the articles, if needed, and the modification, oli, à la campagne, à Paris. All right, let's see another use of a, and it would be to. A few examples. Je rentre à la maison. Ok? So in that case, uh, rentrer, it's to go back. Alright? So, je rentre à la maison. And when we want to introduce this concept, then we should use this à la maison. Je rentre à la maison. Second thing, nous allons, allons is to, aller is to go, ok? À Marseille. Nous allons à Marseille. Okay, so we go to, all right, so in that case you should use this preposition à, all right. Then, il donne un conseil, okay, donner is to give, un conseil, an advice, okay, so he gives an advice, à sa fille, sa fille, his daughter. So in that case, to his daughter, you should use also this preposition Ok, so, je rentre à la maison, nous allons à Marseille, il donne un conseil à sa fille. All right, and so now, whoops, we'll see the second use of this to, ok, but it, when it's combined with the preposition de, like here, so de would be from, and then you put something, and a will be the to. All right, so je travaille, travailler is to work, de, so from, 8 heures à 17 heures. Okay, so it's really the from to. Okay, so in this example, it's quite traditional, quite classic because we introduce the, the, the hours or the time. Okay, so from to. Let's see another example now. Il sera, remember, sera, it's to be, but the future form. Il sera en France du 15 juin. Okay, so here you've got a, a date. And if you look carefully, you've got this du. So it does mean that normally you should put the article le 15 juin. And that's the, the reason why we've been combining the two. And it becomes du. Okay, we've been seeing that in a previous lesson, so if it's not clear, watch it. Du 15 juin au, same thing here, we've got the preposition à, but then combine with the same article, so le, okay, and it will become au, 22 juillet. All right, so in that situation, you can see that it's exactly the same concept, but as we use the articles, then we've got to modify the, the, the prepositions. Ok? So, il sera en France du 15 juin au 22 juillet. 
and the last example that we can have ce train this train okay va so goes de rennes à paris okay and in that case we just put the name of the towns okay de rennes à paris but then in that case so whether it's à 17h au 22 juillet à paris so the concept is it's this two okay but then it is combined with the the and then remember the with the articles and it will change so in that case it it would be two all right another possibility would be the concept of this on okay so let's see a few example here ce film this movie est à la télé okay on tv à la télé Okay, we've got this A here and then la télé. So télé, of course, it's for télévision. Okay, but in most of the cases, we don't use in French this télévision, the full word. We just use this télé word. Okay, ce film est à la télé. Second example. Mon ami, my friend, habite, habite is to live. O, so same thing here. You've got this preposition, but it's combined with le, so it becomes O. And then cinquième étage. Cinquième, fifth, and then étage, floor. So in that case, you want to say that your friend is living on the fifth floor, okay? And in that case, we get to use this a preposition. Third example, il y a une horloge, okay, a clock, au mur, okay, so same thing here, okay, le mur, the wall, okay, but then we combine a and le and it becomes o, okay, au mur. Il y a une horloge au mur. So let's read them one more time. Ce film est à la télé. Mon ami habite au cinquième étage. Il y a une horloge au mur. All right. And now let's see all the other possibilities that we've got. Okay. So with verbs, because some verbs and it's only examples here because uh, we've got many verbs, verbs that will require this preposition uh, à, okay? So, parler, parler à, to talk to, penser à, okay, to think about someone or something, arriver à, okay, to succeed, to do something, okay? So, in that case, you should use this preposition à with these verbs. Okay, you will see that normally the way students do is that they will remember these prepositions and the combination of verbs and preposition little by little. So when you will encounter a new verb with a preposition, the idea is to try to write it or to try to memorize it, and uh, that's the way it's, it will uh, it will go. Okay. So same thing, you can combine this preposition a with adjectives. For instance, interdit a. Or then prêt à interdit, it's forbidden, prêt ready. Okay, so in that case, you should combine these adjectives with the preposition à. Okay, so it's possible to use this preposition à when you want to express or to, to tell how it is done. Okay, so for instance, when you want to say that it's been done, it's been machine done or hand, how do you say, handmade, yeah, you use this fait. So, faire is to do, okay, but then in that case it would be done, okay. À la machine, fait à la main. All right. Second use, when you want to use this travel concept. So, venir is to come, okay. So, if you want to, to say that, you, well, to come by something, okay. Uh, here it's pied, foot, vélo and then motorbike, okay? So the concept in French is that if you're not inside, so like um, a car, a train, tramway, subway, so if you're not inside, then normally the concept would be to use this preposition à, okay? When you want to use this come, go, okay, by. Uh, so you should use this à preposition, okay? But then keep in mind that in many cases, French people tend to use when it comes to vélo, moto. Well, you can listen and you can hear uh, quite many times this en instead of a. Not really for 
pied because uh, well French people will still use this à pied okay because it's like a common expression but still for vélo and moto many persons will will use this en okay uh, officially it should be a mistake but then many persons are using it so just be ready and try to remember that it's possible that you will hear this en vélo uh, on their en, uh, en moto okay if you want to describe something okay so for instance la personne au manteau vert okay so in that case you want to say that uh, this is the person who is wearing uh, uh, the green jacket okay au manteau vert so in that case it's always the same so a and le combine and it will become o or then you know in that case it can be red hair okay so cheveux roux uh, so in that case it's the plural okay a plus le and it will become o like that but it's quite common to use this a okay and then you want to describe a person so it's also uh, quite commonly used if you want to talk about food, for instance, un gâteau au chocolat. All right. So un gâteau au chocolat, same thing here, à le, okay, un gâteau au chocolat, or then un croissant aux amandes, un croissant aux amandes. So gâteau au cake, chocolat, chocolate, croissant, it's this uh, classical French pastry, and then amande, almonds, okay. And then the use, so for instance, if you want to uh, make a difference between, because une cuillère it's a spoon, okay, so coffee spoon will be une cuillère à café, all right, so in that case we've got to use this preposition à as well, or then une machine à laver, washing machine, so une machine à laver. Another option would be the owner, so if you want to say la maison, so the house est à mon frère, okay, so belongs to my brother, so in that case we use this être to be, okay, and then à here, mon frère, my brother, okay, well, then you could use, you could say ce chien, this dog, is mine, so est is à moi, so it's possible, like we've been seeing here, to put a noun after, or then you could put a pronoun like here, à moi, or then you could put the name of the person. C'est à Eric, okay, does it belong to Eric? C'est à Eric, so it's a question in that case, all right. So it's quite quite commonly used this uh, à when you want to uh, say that uh, the person is owning the thing, okay. And then the time, so if you want to uh, use this rendez-vous, so let's meet, à 20 heures, okay, so in that case you should use this A and then you put the time, A, 8 heures du matin, for instance. The pain, normally we've got this expression, so when you say that, uh, when you want to say that, uh, well, you've got an ache, something somewhere in your body, so avoir mal and then A, all right, and then you will combine it with the article, so ventre would be like stomach, okay, so stomach ache would be avoir mal au ventre, so obviously this o is a plus le, so that's the reason why it's like that, okay, ventre is masculine. So if it's uh, tête, la tête, head, headache, a la tête, okay, so same structure, avoir mal à la tête, and then, in that case, pied, foot, au pied, okay, avoir mal Au pied. Okay, so in that case you get the, the plural form. And the last thing that we'll use this preposition A for, it's when you want to say goodbye. So if you notice that probably uh, we say A demain, so see you tomorrow, A demain, um, A bientôt, bientôt soon, see you soon, A tout à l'heure, so it's in a few minutes or in a while, à tout à l'heure, okay, à demain, à bientôt, à tout à l'heure, so in that case you should definitely use this preposition à if you want to say these things. La preposition de, okay, so in the previous lesson it was la preposition à, and the lesson before it was the combination of these 
two prepositions when you've got articles after so if you didn't watch them please do it will be more easy for you so let's start now la preposition de so we'll see the different uses that we can have of this preposition de and especially the meaning in english okay so the first use that we could have or we could spot for this preposition de is the partitive so in french partitif okay so a few examples here il boit du café okay boire is to drink du café café coffee and then here well we've got the partitive form so it's some coffee okay and then remember that we've got the preposition de but then when it's combined with this le it becomes du okay that's the partitive form il boit du café and then ex other examples sorry second example elle prend de la salade okay prendre is to take de la salade some salad okay so elle prend de la salade okay first use of this preposition de it's this partitive concept all right second use will be the translation of from in english okay so a few examples je viens de paris venir is to come i come from paris okay so in that case really this de would be translated with from okay un appel so appel is a call de ma mère from my mother okay so it's exactly this from concept in english okay so let's see now another possibility when you want to introduce this belonging concept okay then usually you should use this preposition de like here l'ordinateur de samuel okay so with this structure you want to say that l'ordinateur the computer belongs to samuel all right so in that case you should use this de so it's quite simple because you just put the word well the noun and after that you put this de and the name of the person okay it could be also like here la voiture the car of the neighbor in that case you need, yeah du voisin voisin is the neighbor okay and then well in that case if you look carefully you've got the preposition de combined with the article le the neighbor okay and it becomes du all right other possibility l'ami the friend de mon père okay my father of my father so it's really this belonging something or someone is belonging in a way to something or some someone as well okay so l'ordinateur de samuel la voiture du voisin l'ami de mon père okay so let's see now another possibility of the use of uh, la preposition de when you want to introduce this containing concept like here for instance une boîte a box de chocolat okay so, so inside the box you've got chocolates okay and then une boîte de chocolat okay so the use of de in that case it's quite clear it's just because it i mean les chocolats sont contenus dans la boîte une boîte une bouteille d'eau okay bottle of water okay and so in that case you should use this de okay but then obviously because you've got first here a vowel okay uh, uh, they don't really get along so as usual in french a uh, disappear and you get this apostrophe une bouteille d'eau okay une bouteille bottle of water a bottle of water une boîte de chocolat une bouteille d'eau okay so in that case definitely you should use this preposition de okay so if you want to introduce the fact that it's made of something then for instance here un rideau so rideau is curtain and then de lin lin is linen un rideau de lin okay second example une chaise a chair de bois bois is wood of wood okay so in that case un rideau de lin une chaise de bois so when you want to introduce the fact that these things are made of something then you will have to use this preposition de okay and then the use for instance here une station de métro 
une station de métro. Other possibility, une place de parking. Yeah, sorry about that, but well, French people tend to use this parking as well. So I know it's coming from English, but still you should pronounce it the French way. Parking. Une place de parking. Okay, and the last one, un studio d'enregistrement. Okay, enregistrement is recording. Un studio d'enregistrement. So as you can see in that case, as usual in French, as we saw previously, we've got this de, but then as enregistrement is starting with a vowel, then a needs to go away. Okay, so une station de métro, une place de parking, un studio d'enregistrement. Okay, so that's this use concept, so what you use these things for, okay, so une place de parking, un studio d'enregistrement. Normally we tend to use as well this uh, preposition de when we combine or when we use these uh, superlatives things, so for instance here, le plus beau film de tous les temps, of all time, okay, so le plus beau, okay, most beautiful, beau is beautiful, film, movie, de tous les temps, of all times, le plus beau film de tous les temps, okay, and then, la plus grande, grande, big, avenue du monde, and in that case, you can see that you combine this de, and then the article le monde, le monde, the world, okay, de le becomes du, okay, so du monde of the world, la plus grande avenue du monde, okay, so for all these superlatives constructions, then remember you will have to use this preposition de, okay, de tous les temps, du monde. And so keep in mind that it's also possible to combine and uh, some adjectives will require this preposition de, as we had previously, some adjectives will require the preposition, uh, the preposition a, okay, and it will be exactly the same with uh, de, so for instance, étonné, astonished, then we put de, okay, content, happy, de, désolé, sorry, de, okay, so as I said, and it will come after that for the verbs, uh, try to remember them when you encounter them or when you read them, okay? That's the only way to really remember them. So, and for the verbs, exactly the same thing. So, parler de, remember, we had the example with parler. So, parler à, to talk to, parler de, to talk about something. So, parler de, for instance, s'excuser de, okay, to excuse oneself, s'excuser. Promettre, to promise, de. Okay, so these verbs will be constructed with the preposition de. La preposition en. Okay, so remember, previous lesson we saw la preposition de, the lesson before it was la preposition a, and in the next lesson we'll discover, uh, well, quite many uh, other prepositions. Okay, so let's start with la preposition en right now. So la préposition en can be used to express this to uh, concept in English. For instance, je vais en ville, okay, Alex to go, and then ville is town, okay, so je vais en ville, or then nous voyageons, voyager is to travel, en Espagne, Spain. Okay, so in that case, when you want to, well, express this to, concept in English, uh, in many cases, we'll use this en preposition, okay? Other use could be this in, for instance, j'habite en Finlande, habiter is to live, okay, I live in Finland, j'habite en Finlande, je fais l'exercice en cinq minutes, okay, so I do, okay, faire is to do, l'exercice, the exercise, in five minutes. Okay, so in that case, and it's quite important, when you use this in, so en here, it will mean the time you need to make the exercise. Okay, so you don't want to express that you will do that 
in five minutes, so after five minutes, but really, if you use this preposition en in that case, it is to express the, the, the time that you need to make this exercise. All right, so in like that, en Finlande, and then en, en cinq minutes. Let's see now for the countries. So in many uh, cases, we'll have so as you, we, we, we saw in a previous lesson, we've got the difference between, for the countries between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural countries. Okay, so in many cases, when the country is ending with this vowel en here, okay, uh, sorry, uh, and uh, and uh here, it will mean that it is feminine. Okay, we've got exceptions, of course, because French language is quite tricky, so we've got exceptions like uh, Mexique, for instance, it's uh, masculine, okay, but in many cases it will mean that it's feminine. If it's feminine, then you will have to use this preposition en if you want to express this in concept, okay? En France, en Espagne, en Allemagne, en Italy, okay? And now we'll read it with the liaison if needed. En France, en Espagne, en Allemagne, en Italy. Okay? So if you want to express this in with countries and only feminine countries, then you should use this en preposition. Okay? And then when we're talking about the seasons, well, We've got four seasons, and as usual in French, we need to have one exception, okay? But then, for the three others, it will be en, okay? En été, so in summer, été is summer. Then en automne, okay, autumn. And then en hiver, okay, make the little liaison here. En hiver, hiver is winter. Au printemps, okay, so keep in mind that for printemps, you will have to use au and not en, okay? And then printemps is spring, okay? En été, en automne, en hiver, au printemps, all right? Another use of this preposition en is to express the mean of transports, and then if you want to say, I'm coming with my car, by car, okay? In French, we will use this preposition Okay, je viens, venir is to come, je viens, I come, okay, by car, en voiture, tu voyages en train, okay, and well, we saw in uh, the, the lesson when we, when we saw this uh, preposition a, we saw that for uh, uh, pied, for instance, foot, and then uh, with so that uh, motorcycle, moto, and then uh, bicycle, vélo. In these cases, we use the preposition a. Okay, but then keep in mind that well, let's say that the main difference is uh, if you want to use this en preposition, normally we tend to use it if we express or if we introduce after that uh, mean of transport that uh, will mean that you will be inside it, okay? So you are inside the car, you are inside the train. Uh, if it would be a um, metro, it would be exactly the same. If, would, if it would be a tramway, tram, it would be exactly the same. You would use this en just because you are inside, okay? So that's the reason why we make, well, the difference between en and then a, okay? So you will use this a if you're talking bicycle or motorbike or then uh, by foot, of course, okay? But then for this voiture, train, you will use this en, okay? I hope it was clear. Uh, other use is uh, the languages, okay? So, for instance, il parle en espagnol. Parler is to talk, okay, or to speak. He speaks in Spanish, en espagnol. Or then, ce livre, this book, est en anglais. This book is in English, okay? En anglais. Other use is uh, when you want to introduce the material, it is uh, something is made of, okay? So, for instance, une montre, montre is a watch, une montre, en or, okay? So, gold, or, okay? So, if you want to say that this watch is made of gold, then une montre en or. Un bateau 
en plastique. Bateau, it's a boat, and then plastic is plastic. So, un bateau en plastique. If you want to express the situation you are in, okay, so, for instance, to be late, être en retard, être en retard, okay, and then the other option here, uh, être en avance, all right, so if you're coming earlier, then être en avance, être en vacances, to be on a holiday, so être en vacances, so in all these situations, like en retard, en vacances, en avance, we will use this preposition en, okay? And then, maybe the last use that I wanted to introduce is uh, what we call the gérondif. So it's a bit tricky because uh, we didn't yet see this uh, participe présent. It will come soon, don't worry. But then, uh, I just wanted to be honest with you and introduce it, even if we didn't, so yet, uh, we didn't see yet the participe présent. So we will construct this gérondif. So the, the meaning of the gérondif is when you want to introduce so two actions so we, we would say action simultanee, so technically two actions that take place at the same time, okay? And the way we construct that is, well, of course, because it's the, the lesson, so the preposition, la preposition en, and then after that you will put this participe présent form that you don't know yet how to make, but we'll see that in a coming lesson, okay? But then I will make, anyway, an example and this is the example, je téléphone, okay, so in the first sentence or in the first part of the sentence, you say, je téléphone, téléphone is to call, okay, and then we have here our gérondif form, so first you've got your preposition, en, and then you've got your participe présent form, so marchand, okay, and if you look carefully, it's coming from the verb marcher, marcher is to walk, okay, dans la rue. All right, so, je téléphone en marchant dans la rue. So, in that structure, you want to introduce the fact that you are making a phone call, you are calling someone, and at the same time, you are walking in the street. Okay, je téléphone en marchant dans la rue. All right, so that's the technique we've got to express two action that take place at the same time, it's this gérondif, okay? And then we construct this gérondif with the, prepo the preposition en, okay? Les prépositions, so just to remind you, we've been seeing uh, first in the previous lesson la préposition en, then before la préposition de, and even before la préposition a, and in this video, in this video, sorry, we'll see not the rest, of course, of all the prepositions, but the main prepositions that we will have in uh, French language. Okay, so let's start now. And the first one that we'll see is pour, and pour means for. Okay, so we'll see two examples here. Ce café est pour vous. Okay, so ce café, this coffee, est, is pour, for, vous, you. Ce café est pour vous. Second example, je voudrais louer cette voiture pour deux jours. Okay, so remember, here we've got this conditional form. So, I would like to louer, means to rent, cette voiture, this car, pour deux jours, for two days. Okay, je voudrais louer cette voiture pour deux jours. Okay, second Preposition or next one, sans, and it means without. Okay, so two examples. Elle voyage sans ses valises. Voyager is to travel, so she travels sans, without, ses valises, her luggages. Il vient sans son chien. Venir, here is to come, so he comes sans, without, son chien, his dog. Okay. Après, you can translate it by after, okay, and then, je viens après la réunion. Venir is to come, je viens, I come, après, after, la réunion, the meeting. Je viens après la réunion, okay. 
then avant means before. Il arrive avant toi. Arriver, to arrive, he arrives avant, before, toi, you. Remember, this is what we call this pronom tonique. Okay, so it's you. Depuis means since or for. Okay, examples. Nous vivons ici depuis 2011. Okay, nous vivons, vivre is to live. Nous vivons, we live, ici, here, depuis, since. And then you put 2011, you just put the year. Okay, so assuming the fact that we are still now in uh, 2012, so 2012, we could use this sentence as well. Nous vivons ici depuis un an. Okay, so in that case, you can use this depuis as well. And then you will introduce un an just because we've been arriving in 2011 and we are now in 2012. Okay, so depuis un an. Derrière means behind. Okay, so the example could be le ballon est derrière l'arbre. Le ballon, the ball, est, is derrière, behind l'arbre, the tree. Okay, un arbre, a tree. Le ballon est derrière l'arbre. Then after that, we can see devant. Devant means in front of. Okay, in front of. And then the example could be Mon collègue, my colleague, est assis, is seated, devant le directeur. Le directeur, the director. Mon collègue est assis devant le directeur. Jusque means until. Example, je reste au bureau jusqu'à 17 heures. Ok, rester is to stay, au bureau, at the office. Je reste au bureau jusqu'à, until, 17 heures. Ok, so you can see that here it's quite interesting because normally we should have this jusque written like that. But then if you look carefully after that, we've got this a. Okay, another preposition. And then you remember the rule when we've got vowel and vowel. Normally what happens is that this final a uh will go away. And then we'll put, sorry, we'll put apostrophe. So that's the reason why we get this jusqu'à. Okay, and then phonetically jusqu'à. Okay, je reste au bureau jusqu'à 17 heures. Sous means under. Simple example. Le livre est sous la table. Le livre, the book, est, is, sous, under, la table, the table. Le livre est sous la table. Sur means on. Okay, and then we've got two examples here. L'ordinateur est sur la table. So, l'ordinateur, the computer, est, is, sur, on, la table, the table. The computer is on the table, sur, here. But then, remember, or keep in mind that it's also possible to use this sur if we're talking about the wall, for instance. So, we could say, l'affiche, so, affiche is poster, l'affiche est est sur le mur. All right, so it could be for la table or any other things like that, and then, then as well for le, le mur, okay, sur le mur. Avec, so the classic one, means with. Elle parle avec son frère. Parler is to talk, son frère, her brother. Elle parle, she talks, avec, with, her brother, son frère. Elle parle avec son frère. She, so this one is quite interesting because if you really want to translate it, so you're talking about the place, okay, but then you're talking about someone's place. So it's the place connected to a person. 
So let's see a few examples now. Je suis chez moi. So if you want to say that you are at your place, then you should use this chez, okay? And then here in that case, you will put this moi, so pronoun tonique. Je suis chez moi. Okay, so this is the first use that you could have. Okay, if you want to introduce this she and then use the name of someone, it's possible, like here. Nous sommes invités chez Laurent. Okay, so we are invited at Laurent's place, if you want to translate it directly. Okay, so that's the way we will use, if we've got a name and we want to introduce the fact that it's at the place of this person, then it's she. Okay, and so it's it will work the same way if we want to talk about, for instance, here the doctor, or then we can say le boulanger, le boucher. Normally, we tend to use this she if we're talking about whether little shops or offices, and traditionally or before the person used to live whether above or then behind or in this place. Okay, so that's the reason why we tend to use this she. Okay, because it is connected to the person more than to the, the shop itself. So, il va chez le médecin. Il va chez le médecin. Contre means against. One example. Nous sommes contre cette décision. Okay, this decision and it's nous sommes, we are, we are against this decision. Nous sommes contre cette décision. Dans, so you can, it means in, inside or into. Okay, so let's see now. Alexandre est dans la voiture. Okay, Alexandre is dans, inside, in la voiture, the car. Okay. Nous entrons dans le magasin. Entrer, to enter, to go inside. Okay. Dans le magasin, the shop. Okay. Par will mean by or per. For example, une lettre envoyée par la poste. Okay. Une lettre, a letter, envoyée, sent. Par la poste, by mail, okay? So in that case, you get to use this par, okay? It could be par uh, courrier électronique, by email if you want, okay? Je mange cinq fruits et légumes par jour, okay? So in that case, it would be this per day, okay? Par jour. Je mange, I eat, cinq, five fruits, fruits et légumes. Légumes is vegetables. Par jour, ok, per day. Je mange cinq fruits et légumes par jour. Pendant means during. Il dort pendant le film. Ok, dormir is to sleep. Pendant, during, le film, the movie. Il dort pendant le film. Vers. So you don't pronounce the final S, means towards or about. Je vais vers la station de métro. Okay, so I am walking in that case because I used to say je vais, so I'm sorry, it's aller, okay. Je vais vers la station de métro, so I go so you can walk or maybe you could drive, or in fact. But then, je vais, I go towards, donc la station de métro. Okay? Or then, it would be possible to use it as well if you get this sentence. Nous avons rendez-vous vers 15 heures. Okay? Nous avons rendez-vous. So, avoir rendez-vous, it's when you have a meeting. Okay? So, avoir, to have. And then, rendez-vous, remember that in French, it's not... It's not so romantic at all. You know, you can have a rendezvous at your dentist, for instance. So it's like we have a meeting. Vers, around, about, okay, 15 heures, okay. So you just want to say that it's not, you know, 15 heures précises, okay, but it's about or around. Voici could be translated with 
this is, okay? So, and we tend to use it quite often if we introduce persons. So, voici mon ami Frédéric. And then normally, you know, it goes with voilà, okay? And then voilà will mean there is, okay? So, I did make this little example, so I took back this. Voici mon ami Frédéric et voilà mon ami Arnaud. Okay, so voilà normally will come after voici. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 9, leçon N. And in this lesson we'll see together les temps composés. So we won't discover them because uh, I thought it might be uh, useful to take the time to review what we saw so far, especially when we're talking about les temps composés, so all these tenses that are composed tenses, okay? So, and so far we've been seeing first le passé composé, then we saw le plus que parfait, after that came le futur antérieur, and finally we saw le conditionnel passé. And so the common thing that we have uh, between all these tenses is that they are composed, okay? So they will be construct the same way, but then of course few things will change. Obviously the first part that we get to use avoir and être will change, but then the rest construction with the participe passé will be the same, okay? So we'll first start with the passé composé, okay? So and if you remember the rule was that first we will use avoir. So if you are not really sure, if you don't remember the, 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 if the verb requires être or not, then put avoir. Avoir should be at the present form. Then you will put your participe passé form and you will get this passé composé. Okay? Remember that in some cases, but we're talking about exceptions or uh, reflexive verbs, you know, these se, blah, blah, blah. So you will have to use être and at the present tense as well, plus le participe passé, and you will get this passé composé. Okay? So, of course, it looks simple like that, but then in some cases, and especially after learning so many things, maybe you don't really remember the, the, the conjugation of avoir and être at the present tense. So we'll take the time to review that one more time. So remember, avoir at the present tense goes like j'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. Okay, so j'ai, tu as, final S not pronounced, Il a, elle a, nous avons, final S not pronounced, and then we make this little link between the two, nous avons, vous avez, a Z at the end will produce this E sound, avez, little link between the two, vous avez, ils ont, okay, final T not pronounced, and then we make the liaison, ils ont, elles ont, alright, so this is for avoir at the present tense, and now être at the present tense, je suis, Tu es, il est, elle est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont, elles sont. Okay, so, je suis, final S not pronounced, tu es, okay, so it's quite strange because you get this ES, but then phonetically it's est, alright, quite open, tu es, il est, exactly the same sound as we had previously, okay, so just... Remember that you write it like that, but then phonetically it goes like E, L, E. Nous sommes, final S not pronounced. Vous êtes, little liaison to be between the two and then final S not pronounced. Ils sont, final T not pronounced. Elles sont. All right? So that's the main, main thing you should remember. Of course, the participe passé, but then we won't cover that in this lesson because we've been, I've been, I mean, I've been making a big, big video on that. So try to search it in the, the channel uh, search engine, and you will find it. Okay. So let's see now. Le plus que parfait. So remember, it was exactly the same rule. So first, avoir. If you're not sure, just put avoir. But avoir should be at the imparfait form. Then the participe passé, 
So you will get your plus que parfait. Okay? And for the same exceptions, we'll have être at the imparfait form. And then the participe passé, and it will give you the plus que parfait. Okay, so for the same reasons, we will see together avoir at the imparfait and être at the imparfait, just to make sure that it's clear for you. And avoir at the imparfait will give j'avais, tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. Okay, so j'avais, final S not pronounced, tu avais, final S not pronounced, il avait, final T not pronounced, elle avait. So exactly the same phonetical thing here, it's avait. Nous avions, final S not pronounced, and then little liaison, nous avions, vous aviez, a Z at the end, et, aviez, and then liaison, vous aviez, ils avaient, so look, here, E, N, T, you write them, you don't pronounce them. So you get phonetically avait, exactly the same thing that we had here, here, and here. Okay, so it's exactly the same thing that you will pronounce. But then here you make the liaison. Ils avaient, elles avaient. Okay, let's see how être goes. J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions. Vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. All right, so exactly the same rule. Remember, final S, here, here, final T, and then here, E, N, T. You don't pronounce them, so you will get étaient, okay, for all these forms, okay. J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était. Same rule here, final S not pronounced, and then you make the liaison. Nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. Okay, make the liaison here as well. Ils étaient, elles étaient. All right, so this is the thing you should remember. Now, the other tense we saw was uh, futur antérieur. And futur antérieur, remember, exactly the same construction, but then avoir should be conjugated at the future, the future, and then le participe passé, and it will give you future antérieur. Or then, for exactly the same exceptions and the same cases, you will use être, but then être should be at the future tense, plus le participe passé, and it will give you le futur antérieur. So, what we'll see We'll see exactly the same thing as we saw previously for the other tenses, so or the other uh, yeah, tenses. So we'll see the future form for avoir and then the future form for être. Okay? And for avoir it will go like j'aurai, tu auras, il aura, elle aura, nous aurons, vous aurez, ils auront, elles auront. Okay, so have a look now. J'aurai, tu auras, final S not pronounced. Il aura, elle aura, nous aurons, final S not pronounced, and then you make the liaison, vous aurez, a Z at the end here, et, aurez, liaison here, vous aurez, ils auront, final T not pronounced, elles auront. Okay? And then, for être, we will get, je serai, tu seras, il sera, elle sera, nous serons, vous serez, Ils seront, elles seront. Okay, so one more time. Je serai, tu seras, final S not pronounced. Il sera, elle sera. Nous serons, final S not pronounced. Vous serez, a Z at the end, et serez. Ils seront, final T not pronounced. Elles seront. All right, so this is the future tense for avoir and être, okay? And now the last composed tense we saw was le conditionnel passé, and so remember that le conditionnel passé will go like that. So first, as we saw previously, avoir in priority at the conditionnel present form, then you put your participe passé, and you will get your conditionnel passé. Or, for the same cases as we had previously for passé composé, futur antérieur, or then plus que parfait, être, but in that case it should be at the conditional present form, 
than the participe passé and you will get your conditionnel passé form. So let's see now uh, uh, how avoir and être are at the conditionnel present, just to refresh your memory. And it goes like that. J'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. Okay, so one more time. J'aurais, final S not pronounced, tu aurais, same thing here. Il aurait, elle aurait, final T not pronounced, so phonetically exactly the same form here. Nous aurions, final S not pronounced, and then you get this liaison, nous aurions. Vous auriez, a Z at the end, et auriez, and then the liaison, vous auriez. Ils auraient, remember, ENT, you don't pronounce it, auraient, ils auraient, elles auraient. All right, so this is for avoir, and then let's see, être. Je serais. Tu serais, il serait, elle serait, nous serions, vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. Ok, so let's see how it goes. Je serais, final S not pronounced, tu serais, same thing here, il serait, elle serait, final T not pronounced, nous serions, final S not pronounced, vous seriez, a Z at the end, et seriez, il serait, So, ENT uh, not pronounced, elle serait. All right. So, this is the first part that you should use when you come, when you make, sorry, this uh, conditionnel passé form, okay? That's it for les temps composés. If you've got some doubts, uh, remember, I've been making uh, videos regarding each uh, of these tenses, so it's possible to find them. Uh, if you want more video or other videos, then remember, youtube.com slash imagier is here, and then more material if you want to find, uh, well, other things, softwares or pictures or flashcards, imagier.net is waiting for you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. L'impératif. Okay, so as usual, when we see a tense, we first work on l'emploi, so when do we use it, and then after that we'll see la formation, so how do we construct this impératif form. Okay, but then first, of course, l'emploi. So, when do we use the impératif? Well, it's quite simple. We've got three main uses of l'impératif. The first one, le conseil. So if you want to translate conseil, it would be advice, okay? So if you want to give an advice to someone, okay, in most of the cases, you will use this imperative form. Or then if you want to give an order, okay? So normally that's the tense we use if we want to use this order thing. And then uh, la défense, so if you want to forbid something to someone, okay? So in that case, you should use l'imperatif, okay? So conseil, ordre ou défense. Okay, we'll see just a few examples just to see how it works. Le conseil, so we've got this example. Pour aller à la gare, tourner à gauche et continuer tout droit. Okay, so to go to the station, aller is to go, la gare, the station, pour aller à la gare, tourner, and that's our first impératif, à gauche, on your left, et continuer, continue is to continue, tout droit, straight. Okay, so tourner and continuer here are at the imperative form. Okay, normally at this level, maybe it rings a bell and maybe you can uh, think that they look like something we saw previously. Okay, so ordre now, if you want to give an order, same thing here. Uh, Faites devoir, okay, so faire is to give. Uh, sorry, to do, sorry, <laughs> and then tes devoirs, your homework, okay, we tend to put that at the plural form in French. Fais tes devoirs, okay, and this is here as well, an impératif, okay, and then let's see now, une défense, n'utilisez pas votre téléphone portable pendant le cours, so of course, In that case, défense, you want to forbid something, so you should use this uh, negative form, okay? So, n'utilisez pas votre téléphone portable pendant, during, le cours, the lesson, okay? Utiliser is to use. N'utilisez pas votre téléphone portable pendant le cours, same thing here, utiliser, 
is at the imperative form okay so now first thing the when we talk about this uh, imperative form the, the the first thing that you've got to remember is that we've got only three persons so there will be tu nous and then vous so the imperative doesn't exist for je for il and il au pluriel okay and then the second thing that you should remember is that you won't use these pronoun personnel so normally when we've got a tense uh, well so far all the tenses that we saw you use these pronoun personnel so to nous and vous okay the concept with the imperative is that you won't use to either nous or vous okay so you don't use this pronoun personnel all right so these two things are the main thing first only three persons tu nous and vous and the second thing you don't use the pronoun personnel okay let's see now how we build this imperative form so we'll see first the premier group then we'll see the deuxième group and then the troisième group and finally of course as usual the irregular verbs all right so let's start with the first group le premier groupe so normally the first group and it's it's been that way so far is the easy group because uh, it is regular in that case for the imperative well it will be the tricky group okay because for instance at the present form we've got tu parles okay so that's the present form of the verb parler parler to talk from the from, from the first group okay if we want to make this imperative form well it will look like that parle so you can see that your final s needs to go away and you will get this parle form this is your imperative form so l'imperatif and then don't forget to put le point d'exclamation here because whether it's an order or an advice you should put it okay that's the way it goes and then remember we don't put the pronoun personnel so just this form okay so that's the first form of parler at the imperatif then nous parlons so this is the present form okay well it's quite easy you don't touch it you don't change anything you just put it back here don't put the pronoun personnel of course just put this point d'exclamation at the end and you've got your imperative form so parlons okay and then vous parlez well same thing here you just keep it like it is at the present form and you just put your point d'exclamation at the end so what you need to remember is that the only thing that will change so between the present form here and this imperative form is this final s that normally we don't pronounce but still we write it okay so it needs to go away at the imperative for the to form okay let's see now verbs from the second group so i took this uh, finir finir to end to finish okay so to fini at the present form and have a look it's exactly the same form fini okay point d'exclamation and you take away the pronoun personnel all right then nous finissons exactly the same form finissons don't forget the point d'exclamation at the end and you take away this nous vous finissez and you will get finissez okay so what you've got to remember second group of verbs actually they will be exactly the same as uh, at the present form okay so no change of course you need to take away the pronoun personnel but the forms will stay the same okay so let's see now the troisième group so normally in most of the cases troisième group is the contain all the tricky verbs okay uh, but then if you take the example of prendre prendre is to take tu prends at the present form okay well look it is exactly the same thing keep in mind that of course you should put this point d'interrogation at the end uh, sorry point d'exclamation at the end and then you take you take away this pronoun personnel but still it's the same form all right then nous prenons at the present form we'll get this pronoun and the last one vous prenez 
you will get prenez. Okay, so third group of verbs, actually it's quite easy because you don't touch anything, you don't change anything, you just take away this pronoun personnel and you will have your impératif form. Okay, of course, as usual in French, we've got some irregular verbs. Okay, so the first one will be aller. Okay, so aller will be like that. So the only thing that will change with aller is, well, what we saw in the first group, the final S will go away. So you get va, allons, aller. Okay, the other forms are exactly the same. Savoir will become sache, sachons, sachez. Ouvrir, ouvre, so the S goes away, ouvrons, ouvrez. Okay, Alice is to go, savoir to know, ouvrir, to open. Okay, then of course, être and avoir, so être will become soi, remember final S is not pronounced, soi, then soyons, soyez, all right, soi, soyons, soyez, and avoir will become a, remember the final a is not pronounced, so you only have this a-e sound, a, okay, a, ayons, ayez, okay, a, ayons, ayez, okay, so one more time, soi, Soyons, soyez, then a, ayons, ayez. All right. And now, remember that all these tricky verbs will be modified if you put a pronoun after. Okay, and we're talking about only two categories of pronouns. So we saw the pronouns previously, so you should know. Now, <laughs> what pronouns I'm talking about? So I'm talking about this pronoun i here, so the y pronoun, and I'm talking about the pronoun en. Okay. So because in most of the, well, not most of the cases, but quite often in in French, when we use the imperative, we tend to avoid repeating things. So uh, we will put a pronouns if needed and if possible. Okay. So in that case, for instance, remember. So it's from the first group. So normally when you put this imperatif, you shouldn't put the S, okay? But then if you put this Y, so this pronoun after, then you will have to put back this S just to produce it orally because you will pronounce it pense-y, pense okay? Pense-y. All right, so you get to make this liaison. Same thing here, vas-y, vas-y, all right, and then achète-en, achète-en, all right. So that's one important thing if you want to construct this imperative form with pronouns. Then now we'll see how to construct this imperative when we've got the negative form after that, we'll see how it works if you've got only one pronoun and pronoun complément, and then one or two in that case. And then uh, finally, we'll see with the verb pronomino. But then now first, la négation. So I took this parler verb, and if you have a look at it, so imperatif is Parle, okay, if you want to write the same sentence but at the negative form, well, it's quite easy because it will be ne parle pas, okay, so you just put your ne before the verb and then the pas after the verb and of course you don't change the, the rest. Finir, finissons, ne finissons pas, okay, so same concept, ne first, then your verb and after that pas. And then mettre, mettez will become ne mettez pas. Okay, so it's not that difficult. Now let's see with the pronouns. Okay, and then first part will be with one pronoun and after that we'll see how to construct that with two pronouns and it is a bit difficult if I'm totally honest with you. But now with one pronoun, let's see, regarde-moi, 
okay? And it will become at the negative form, ne me regarde pas. Okay, so here normally remember these pronouns me, okay, should come before the verb. Then the rule at the imperatif is that if you've got these structures, so structure affirmative, okay, so it's not the negative form, then they should come after. And then this me is one of the pronouns that will change and it will become moi. Regarde moi, okay? But when you put back this structure to the negative form, so me just become the normal form, so ne me regarde pas, all right? Same thing, so toi will be the second and the last to be uh, drastically modified, so it will become regarde toi, okay? So the rules stay the same, you put it after, okay? Regarde toi. All right, but then when you put the negative form, well, it becomes normal, so ne, and then te regarde pas. Okay, keep in mind that, as usual for the pronouns, they will come before the verb, okay? So your negative form is coming before and after the whole thing. And then, well, if you've got this le pronoun, or it could be the la, well, it will... It will stay the same, so no modification, so regarde-le, and then negative form, ne le regarde pas. Okay? Regarde-la, ne la regarde pas. It could be regarde-nous, okay? Ne, whoops, sorry, sorry, I made a mistake, it should be nous here, ne nous regarde pas. Okay? And the last one, regarde-les, will become ne les regarde pas. Okay, so keep in mind that it's only this me and te pronouns that will change. They will become this moi and toi. So they will become these forms and you should put each time anyway after the verb. And don't forget this little thing between the two because as you can see, we've got to put it. Okay, now if you want to put two pronouns in your structure with the imperative, well, it's something that's, uh, well, it's not really rare to, to use that, okay? But then, well, we've got some, of course, as usual, quite strict rules, and that's the thing. The first part that you will have will be me or m apostrophe, te or t apostrophe, lui, then nous, and leur, okay? So that will be the first thing that you will have to put and after that will come your pronoun en okay that's normally the the the, the association of pronouns that we've got okay so let's see them in action for instance parlement okay so as you see first you put this m apostrophe and then you put your pronoun okay don't forget that they must come after your verb because it's the imperative Parlement, okay? But if you put them at the negative form, then you will get ne m'en parle pas, okay? Remember, negative form, then they come back as they should be all the time, so before the verb, all right? So another example, parle-nous en, okay? Here, and then we will get Ne nous en parle pas. Okay, sorry for the examples, but I, I tend to not to make the liaison when I make these little examples, just because I think it's more clear not to make the liaison, okay? But then, of course, parle-nous-en, ne nous en parle pas should be the, the way you should pronounce them, okay? But still, just to make it clear where you put them and to avoid any mistake or anything like that. Okay, so same thing here, so parle, and then after that you've got to pronoun, and second pronoun, en. But when you put the negative form, ne, and then you put them back before your verb. Okay? Uh, second possibility that you would have would be the pronouns like le, la, and les. Okay? And they will come first, and after that you will have this moi, lui, nous, and leur, okay? Let's see a few examples now. Donne-la-moi, okay? Donne-la-moi. So exactly the same rule as we saw previously, okay? So you put them after your 
verb like that okay but of course when you put the negative form then you put them back look ne me la donne pas donne la moi ne me la donne pas then donne la nous and it will become ne nous la donne pas all right so i know this is really difficult so don't worry because many students have some difficulties at the beginning okay but then little by little you will understand the structure and the way to construct that okay just try to keep that in mind okay try to listen to persons and then try to use this structure but remember that in many cases it's possible to avoid repeating or to avoid sorry using the, the pronouns by repeating a few words okay so it's well it's an option as well okay so let's see now les, les verbes pronominaux okay and so i took this uh, se regarder verb okay so regarde toi and then you if you put the, the same structure but then uh, at the negative form so ne te regarde pas Regardons-nous, ne nous regardons pas, regardez-vous, ne vous regardez pas. Okay, so exactly the same thing as we saw previously. So, toi, nous, and vous should come after the verb, okay? But when you put this structure at the negative form, so, te, nous, and vous should come before the verb. Okay, so that's the rule. Les liaisons obligatoire. Uh, so, since we started this uh, Learn French with Vincent videos, I've been talking um, quite much about uh, les liaisons, so the, these little links that you can put between, uh, between the words. Um, and so, of course, we've got some rules for these, uh, these things. And so I thought that maybe it might be useful to, to just cover this topic uh, right now because I've been receiving few messages uh, regarding this topic. So this uh, video will only focus on les liaisons obligatoires, so the one you should make, okay? And after that, we'll see, uh, well, the one that you shouldn't make and then uh, the one that are optional, so it's possible to make them or not. Okay, but in, the, in this video, we'll focus only on the, the, the one that you should make. So, let's start now. So, the first uh, situation when you should make it, it's when you use these articles définis. So, le, la, le, remember, the in English. And then, when you get the plural form, so it's le, it's like that. And then it ends with this S. If you've got a word after and then it's starting with a vowel like this one ami friends then you should make the liaison les amis all right les amis then second possibility here les articles indéfinis so in english a uh, but then in french we've got the difference between the masculine un une des okay and then i took the plural form just to make it clearer so des here ending with s and then you've got a word after étudiant students so it starts with a vowel, so you should make the connection, the liaison between the two, des étudiants. All right. Other possibility when you get these, well, the, the adjective possessive. So when you say my, your, etc. So in French, it would go like that. So in that case, my children. So it should be at the plural because this children is at the plural. Okay, so it goes like that. And then ending with S. Enfant, children is starting with a vowel, so you should make the liaison. Mes enfants, mes enfants. All right, and of course, les adjectifs démonstratifs. Sorry, this or these. Okay, and in that case, I took the plural form, so these here, and then ordinateur computers. So you should make the liaison between s and o. Ces ordinateurs, ces ordinateurs. Okay, so, les amis, des étudiants, mes enfants, ces ordinateurs. So, in these cases, you should make the liaison without any doubt, okay? And so, we also have this interrogative situation. So, when you ask a question, remember, we use this quel, okay? It's what, but then, of course, as usual in French, we've got the difference between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural, feminine plural. In that case, I did use this 
option, it's feminine and it's plural, so that's the reason why I write this kel like that. And it ends with s. Option is starting with a vowel. You should make the liaison between the two. Quelles options? Quelles options? All right. And then if you well heard from the beginning, you know the the concept of this liaison is that you don't make any pause between the two words. Quelles options? It's really a link between the two. Quelles options? Indéfini. Well, exactly the same rule. In that case, you get certain indéfini, and it is here at the plural form. Individu, plural, starting with a vowel, you make the liaison, certains individus, certains individus, all right, and the last situation for this page, numéro, okay, so if we're talking about, about the numbers, in that case I took trois, okay, three, just because it ends with S, as you can see here, and then appartement, apartments, starting with a vowel, so you should make the liaison, trois appartements. Okay, so, quelles options, certains individus, trois appartements. So, in all these cases, you should make the liaison. All right, but then it continues. So, now, situation where you've got a sentence in which you've got first the adjective and then the noun, like here, for instance. Les beaux enfants, okay, so you make the liaison between beau, so adjective, and enfant, and here it's quite interesting because even if you get this X, well, phonetically, it will be like Z, so like if it would be an S, okay? Les beaux enfants, all right? Les jeunes étudiants, all right? So same thing here, the link between the two, les jeunes étudiants, all right? And then if you get this pronom personnel, so I, you, he, she, etc., and then your verb, so in that case, I took vous, okay, and then the verb to être, uh, sorry, <laughs> the verb être, to be, <laughs> uh, so in that case you get vous êtes, vous êtes, so you make the liaison between the two, and then avoir, to have, nous avons, nous avons, all right, so remember, pronom personnel, then the verb, you make the, li the liaison. And then it's quite interesting because this verb être, so to be, if it's at the third person of the singular, so he is or she is, il est, elle est, okay, then definitely you should make the liaison if you've got something after. So like here, for instance, il est admirable, ta, ta, il est admirable, okay, elle est intéressée, elle est intéressée, all right, so in all these cases you should make the liaison, and in that case it's with t, il est admirable, elle est intéressée. And it continues. If you've got this uh, structure in which you've got the pronom complement before the verb, okay, so we've been doing a few videos regarding this topic. If you don't know how to make them well, you can check them. Uh, there are many videos regarding this topic. And so remember the pronoun should be before the verb. So when you've got this kind of structure, subject, pronoun, verb, in that case you should make the liaison between the two. Il nous aide. Il nous aide. Elle vous admire. Elle vous admire. All right, so z, z here as well. Elle vous admire. Il nous aide. Okay. If you've got the verb first and then you put your pronoun after, because normally that's the way we should proceed, you know, if we want to construct a correct question, normally you should put the first the verb and after the pronoun. Okay. So in this situation, then you should make the liaison. And so this little D here is in red just to show you that you won't pronounce it like D to make the liaison, but you will pronounce it like T. And so you will get prend-il, prend-il, okay? But then here, prend-elle, okay? So you get your T and then prend-elle, all right? So prend-il, remember, D pronounced like T, and here, prend-elle. All right, and so if you want to uh, construct a structure in which you will have whether une conjonction, so these little words that will link uh, whether words or then sentences, or then if it's une préposition, many videos regarding that topic as well, or adverb, but then they should be only one syllable long, okay? So, like that, quand elle, 
all right same rule here remember when you will have this d you will phonetically pronounce it like t quand elle dans un okay and in that case you get this preposition dans okay and then the article dans un all right and here we've got this adverb beaucoup and then admirer beaucoup beaucoup admirer sorry beaucoup admirer all right quand elle dans un beaucoup admirer all right so let's repeat them il nous aide elle vous admire prend-il prennent-elle quand elle dans un beaucoup admirer Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 9, Leçon Q. And in this lesson we'll see together les liaisons interdites. So remember les liaisons, it's actually this little link that we can put between the words when we read or when we speak. Okay, so in the previous lesson we saw the liaison, so the one that you have to do, okay, so the rules that you get to follow if you really want to make this liaison properly. And then in this video, well, we'll try to see uh, the one that you shouldn't do, okay, because in some cases it's not possible to make this liaison. Okay, so let's see now. And the first one is actually the maybe the most important one because uh, normally students tend to make this mistake quite often at the beginning, which is totally normal because if you think about that, uh, we've got this E conjunction, so it means and in English, okay? And so normally students tend to think that when you've got, you know, lui et elle like that, Well, why not put this little liaison between the two? Because it would be quite logical. After all, we tend to make it and to put it, you know, a little bit everywhere. But in that case, sorry about that. The rule is really strict. So after this conjunction E, like we've got here, you don't make any liaison. So no links after E. Okay, so if you want to read it correctly here, it will go like lui et elle. All right, so don't think about putting something between the two. Don't think about producing something like lui et elle. No, 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 nothing here. Lui et elle. Okay, and it will be exactly the same thing in this example here. Toi et eux. All right, so no liaison, even if it's a bit tempting because it would be possible, but then no, 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 no. So when you get this A, remember no liaison after, okay? Then after that, we've got this structure or this possibility in which you've got a question like here and here, okay? And you start your question with an adverb. Okay, and that's of course what we call adverb interrogatif because it's a question. So, comment, how, as-tu, okay, so do you have, okay, or have you? But in that case, remember that if you start with an adverb like here, so avec un adverb, don't make the liaison. So you don't say, comment as-tu, no, 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 nothing here, comment as-tu, all right? Exactly the same thing here. Quand, when, and then ont-ils, here you get this little thing, quand ont-ils, quand ont-ils, all right, so you don't make a liaison here between the two, okay, it was the second rule. And then remember that if you've got a noun, and if this noun is at the singular form, then you shouldn't make the liaison. Like here, for instance, un chien, a dog, adorable, okay, here, It would be tempting to do it, but then no, no liaison, so un chien adorable. Okay, same thing here, une maison étrange. Okay, house, and then étrange, strange. Une maison étrange, un chien adorable. Okay, remember, you shouldn't make any liaison here after this word and after this word. And then, if you've got this participe passé form, so it does mean that whether it is at the, like here or here, it is at the passé composé form, all right? So, ils sont sortis, okay? So, if we take the time to have a look at it, here you've got first être, 
and here you've got the participe passé form and the whole thing gives you this passé composé okay exactly the same thing here so we've got the uh, the verb être to be and after that here we've got this participe passé form and this form together give you the passé composé form okay so in that case if you think about uh, what we said so après le participe passé so if we spot it this is the participe passé sorti and this is here the participe passé and well both and with s it would be possible to make a to make a link you know between s and r here and s and r u here but then the rule is quite strict you don't make a liaison after your participe passé okay so ils sont sortis à 15h all right so no liaison here no link between the two ils sont sortis à 15h exactly the same thing here elles sont allées au cinéma all right elles sont allées au cinéma so no liaison after your participe passé here okay and then well a quite important thing as well après un verbe conjugué avec tu many persons send me messages regarding this thing when i do the, the, the uh, conjugation and when i conjugate the, the verbs they say that you know that it's try quite strange because you don't make the liaison uh, when it's for tu well just because it's well it's a rule you shouldn't make the liaison when you conjugate a verb at the to form okay don't ask me why <laughs> because basically there's no logic in that you know uh, it's just the way it is so that's one rule and uh, honestly it, it's a bit strange I know especially when you're learning language for what reason only for one person you shouldn't make the liaison but unfortunately for you that's the way we do it so let's respect the rule so in that case if you look at uh, the sentence so you get first your subject so tu and then here you get a okay and so this is the verb être and the second form so second person of the singular so tu es admirable all right and in that case well don't make the liaison okay tu es admirable and it will be exactly the same thing here tu parles avec nous so no liaison here between parle and avec okay tu parles avec nous all right so that's the rule when you've got a verb at the tu person okay so second person of the singular don't make a liaison after the verb all right and then when you've got these interesting structures so if we've got the the, the pronoun so the subject and it's after your verb like here because normally that's the way I mean that's the official way that we should um, well you we should respect if we want to ask a question first we should put the verb then we should put the subject okay so veulent-ils all right so it should go like that and then if you've got well something after like here aller avec nous okay it could be possible if you think about that we've got an s here and then we've got a vowel after but then the rule goes like that if you've got this structure so in which your pronoun is coming after your verb because it's a question then you don't make the liaison okay veulent-ils aller avec nous okay exactly the same thing here parle-t-il en anglais okay so no liaison after your pronoun okay just because the structure is like that first you've been having your verb then your pronoun then you don't make a liaison and another rule is if you've got like here ces ordinateurs or like here mes étudiants okay so in these two sentences ces ordinateurs it's the subject okay mes étudiants subject and then you've got the verb coming after all right and so 
the concept or the idea is that if you've got a subject like that, but then it's what we call a group nominal, okay? So in that case, it's not a first name, or then it's not the pronoun, je, tu, il, etc. But it's, you know, a word or a group of words. And in that case, you don't make a liaison after this group nominal. So in that case, ces ordinateurs, you don't make the liaison between this word and the verb that will come after. Okay? Ces ordinateurs ont, and the sentence continues. Okay? Same thing here. Mes étudiants apprennent. And the sentence continues. So, the concept is quite strict. Remember, you've got your subject, so it must be something like that. Okay? So, you've got group of words, okay, and after that you won't make the liaison with the verb, okay? And then, this is quite interesting because it's what we call an H aspiré, okay? So for instance, in this case, well I did put that in a big letter because it's a place in uh, Paris, okay? So, but in that case still, even if you've got this H, okay, it belongs to this aspiré group of words, so containing this H, okay, and it means that you won't have the possibility to make the liaison between your article and your word. So in that case, you shouldn't make the liaison, so you shouldn't say les alles, but it sh you should say les alles. Okay, les halles. Same thing here, H, uh, well it's an X, okay, and in that case it's the, the plural form. Les H, okay, les H. Okay, so you don't say les H, but you say les H, all right? So I did write two other examples. In that case, harpe, so the musical instrument, instrument. Des harpe, okay, so you don't make the liaison between the two. Des harpes, and the last one, hiérarchie. Des hiérarchie. Okay, so just to show you that it's not only with A, because I've got three examples with A, but then in that case it's I. Okay, des hiérarchie. All right, so no liaison here, 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 and here. All right, because these words are starting with what we call H, aspiré. And that's it, okay? So if you want more videos, youtube.com slash imagier or the website is waiting for you, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Liaison optional. So it does mean that it's possible to make them. It's not uh, compulsory, but still uh, it would be advisable to make them. So I know for what reason should I do only one video for that. Well, it's just to give you the opportunity to choose whether you want to make them or not, because in both cases it would be possible. Okay, so let's start now, les liaisons optionnelles, and the first one will be après le verbe aller, okay? So, remember that it will be possible first to say, je vais avoir un chien, so you don't make the liaison, or if you want to make it, it is possible, je vais avoir un chien, okay? First option possible, je vais avoir un chien. Then if you want to make the liaison, it's also possible, je vais avoir un chien. Ils vont habiter en France without the liaison or ils vont habiter en France with the liaison. Okay? Ta, ta. Ils vont habiter en France. All right? Second possibility, après le verbe être, exactly the same thing. It's possible to read this sentence like Je suis intéressé par l'histoire Or then you can read it with the liaison Je suis intéressé par l'histoire Second example here Ils sont arrivés ce soir Or then Ils sont arrivés ce soir Après le verbe avoir Well it's exactly the same rule nous avons une amie, or then, nous avons une amie, ils ont un chien, 
or if you want to make the liaison, ils ont un chien. Same thing with the verb falloir. Il faut admettre ses erreurs. Or then, if you want to make the liaison, il faut admettre ses erreurs. Il faut étudier beaucoup. Or, with the liaison, il faut étudier beaucoup. The verb devoir will follow exactly the same rule. First option, je dois être chez lui dans 15 minutes. Or then, je dois être chez lui dans 15 minutes. Ils doivent attendre mon arrivée. Or if you want to make the liaison, ils doivent attendre mon arrivée. Same thing with the verb pouvoir. Elle peut arriver demain. Or then if you want to make the liaison, elle peut arriver demain. Nous pouvons inviter cette personne. Or if you want to make the liaison, nous pouvons inviter cette personne. It will be exactly the same thing with the verb vouloir. Je veux entendre sa musique. Or then with the liaison, je veux entendre sa musique. Okay, remember we had the same rule. Even if we've got this X at the end, well, with the liaison it will sound like Z. Okay, je veux entendre, je veux entendre, je veux entendre sa musique. Okay, then... Elles veulent attendre avec moi. Or if you want to put the liaison, elles veulent attendre avec moi. And then, other option, entre un nom pluriel et l'adjectif. Okay, so here we've got a group of words. If you look carefully first, you've got a noun, then you've got an adjective. Well, both are at the plural form, okay? And so the rule is like entre un nom pluriel et l'adjectif. So we are talking about here and here, okay? But it's optional, it's not compulsory. You don't need to do it if you don't want to do it, but it's possible, okay? So first option, des personnes étrangères. Or if you want to make the liaison, des personnes étrangères. Des amis irlandais, or if you want to make the liaison, des amis irlandais. And then I made two more here. Des étudiants intelligents, or if you want to make the liaison, des étudiants intelligents. Des lampes artificielles, and if you want to make the liaison, des lampes artificielles. Le subjonctif. Okay, so it's quite important. And then, as usual, we introduce, when we introduce a mode or a tense, then we'll divide the video in two parts. The first part will be l'emploi. So when do we use le subjonctif? And then the second part will concern la formation. So how do we construct this subjonctif? But let's first see L'emploi, so when do we use le subjonctif? And so we'll use le subjonctif when we want to express une obligation, une volonté, une possibilité, un doute, un sentiment, une appréciation, un jugement. Okay, so that's the idea. So if you want to express une obligation, some, something you have to do, une volonté, something you want to do, une possibilité, possibility, un doute, a doubt, un sentiment, a feeling, une appréciation, appreciation, and then un jugement, a judgment. So in these cases, we'll use after this verb. The subjunctive. Okay, so let's see first une obligation. So for example, we'll have this verb falloir and then the construction falloir que. So you will see that when we talk about the subjunctive, each time we will have after the verb, we will have que and then the following verb will be at the 
subjunctive form. Okay, so that's the concept. All right. So, for instance, if we have a look at these uh, sentences, sorry. So, falloir it's to need to have to. Okay, il faut que tu écoutes. All right, il faut que tu écoutes. All right, and then in that case here, so we'll see a bit later, of course, how to make it, but still, you've got this verb, écouter, and this form is the subjunctive. Okay, il faut que tu écoutes. Il faut que les étudiants travaillent. All right, il faut que les étudiants, and then here you've got the verb, travailler, to work, and this form is the subjunctive. Okay, so so far it doesn't look that difficult because if you look carefully, it looks like something that we encounter a long time ago when we started to learn French, maybe unit one or unit two, okay, but then we'll see that a bit later. So, une volonté, something you want to do, and then, well, the verb that normally we tend to use is the verb vouloir, vouloir, to want, okay, vouloir que will be followed by le subjonctif. For instance, je veux que mon frère vienne me voir. All right? Je veux que mon frère, my brother. Here you've got the form, uh, la subjonctive form of venir, venir to come, me voir, see me. Okay? And then, le directeur veut que les employés arrivent à l'heure so the director, the director, veut que les employés, the employees, arrive, uh, to arrive, à l'heure on time, okay? And in that case, arriver, to arrive here, it's the subjunctive form, okay? So, une possibilité, possibility, so let's see what we've got. The structure could be être possible que, okay, to be possible uh, donc, être possible, and then que, as usual, remember. So, for instance, il est possible que mes amis viennent ce soir. Okay? Il est possible que, so it could be translated like, it is possible that, okay? Mes amis, my friends, and then venir here to come. So, this form here is the subjunctive form, ce soir, tonight. So, in that case, you should put your verb here at the subjunctive. Un doute, a doubt. So let's see what we've got. And the structure, so être sûr, to be sure, okay? But then, of course, you should put the negative form of this, to be sure. So ne pas être sûr que, okay? Because you want to express a doubt. So je ne suis pas sûr qu'il parle anglais. Okay, so I'm not sure that... And then, il, he, parler, to talk, to speak, anglais, English, okay? And here, you've got your verb, parle, and this form is the subjunctive, okay? Let's see the next one, un sentiment, a feeling, okay? So, for this sentiment, let's see what we've got. So, we could have avoir peur que, okay, to be afraid that, avoir envie que, well, it's, it could be translated as to want, okay, to fancy. Être désolé que, to be sorry, that. Être content, to be happy, satisfied, que. Okay, all right. For these structures, then you should make a subjunctive after. So they should be followed by une forme subjunctive. Okay, and then let's see une appréciation. Une appréciation, for instance, we could have this... Préféré, to prefer, préféré que, okay, aimer mieux, mieux is better, aimer, to like or to love, better that, okay, aimer mieux que, and then these structures should be followed by une forme subjonctive, okay, and then un jugement, judgment, so it could be, c'est important que, it's important that, il est dommage, Que, il est regrettable que, and they should be followed by a subjunctive form. All right? Be careful. The following verbs. Croire, to believe. Penser, to think. Trouver, 
to find, especially when you, you, when you express your, your opinion, okay, to find, I find that, être sûr, okay, so these verbs are normally followed by the indicative form, so all the tenses we saw so far, okay, but then when you put these verbs at the negative form, then they should be followed by the subjunctif. Okay, so keep that in mind, so croire, penser, trouver, être sûr. If you want to use these verbs and put them at the negative form, they should be followed by the subjunctif. Okay, let's see now how we'll make this subjunctif form. And so, the tricky thing normally when we talk about the subjunctif is that you will have two different parts. Okay, so the important thing is that you must know by heart, of course, the present form, so of the verb that we saw a long time ago, okay, so because the, the idea is that you will have to use this il at the plural form here, okay, and this form of the present will help you to build the forms of the subjunctive for je, for tu, for il, for elle, for il, and for elle. Okay, so the, f the form of your verb at the present, at the third person of the plural, will help you to construct the subjunctive form for all these persons here. And that's the difficulty because, of course, for nous and vous, well, you will have to use the nous form of the present to construct nous and vous. And that's the tricky thing of the subjunctive. So that's the reason why in make many cases students tend to, uh, tend to say that, oh my god, it's too difficult. It's just because we've got two different ways of making, well, the form for je, tu, il, elle, il and elle, and then nous and vous. But then don't be afraid because in most of the cases you will see that it's quite easy, all right? So, you know what? I will take a tricky verb. Just to start, we'll take a tricky verb and after that you will think, you will think that the rest is really easy. So let's take prendre for instance. And so as I told you, the idea is to take the present form of the verb, okay? And the first one, so that we should take is the plural, so third person of the plural, and it goes like il pren, okay? Prendre is to take. Il pren, so that's the present form, okay? For il. And then we've got nous prenons, okay? Because remember, we're using this nous prenons form, we'll use it for nous and for vous of the subjunctive, okay? So we can spot first the ending, because we know that ENT is the ending for il, and then ONS is the ending for nous, and of course what we'll do is we'll take them away. So we'll put the endings away and we'll keep only this first part here and the first part here. And so what we'll do is we'll take this first part, okay, so the part that we took away from this il form, all right, and then we'll put je. Je, so we take it back, have a look, it goes here, and we put the ending, the ending for E will be E, for JE, sorry. The ending for JE will be E, okay? The ending for TU will be ES. The ending for IL, ELLE will be E. And the ending for IL, ELLE at the plural form will be ENT, okay? If you look Carefully, it's not that strange. I mean, these endings are quite common, and we've been we've been encountering these endings, you know, previously. If you think about the, the present form, then it looks a bit familiar. Okay, so je prenne, tu prennes, ils prennent, elles prennent, ils prennent et elles prennent. Then phonetically, as usual, remember we've got only one form here. 
it is exactly the same form so we pronounce it the same way but of course as usual we write it differently okay so keep in mind that ending for je is e ending for tu is es ending for il elle is e and ending for il elle and the plural form is ent okay so it's the first part okay because if you remember we had as well this part from nu okay and as i told you the difficulty of the subjunctive is just because we will have a difference of construction for nu and vu and so in that case we'll take this first part here we put it here and we put the ending e o n s yon and the ending for vous is ye. So we get nous prenions, vous preniez. All right? So if we think carefully, ending e o n s for nous, e e z for vous. Okay? If, in, if you remember, it looks quite familiar because it's the ending as well for the imparfait form that we saw a while ago. Okay? So let's have a look now. The full thing. So, que je prenne, que tu prennes, qu'il prenne, qu'elle prenne, que nous prenions, que vous preniez, qu'il prenne, qu'elle prenne. And this is the reason why students are a bit worried usually at the beginning, just because as we saw, we've got two constructions two different constructions so for the first part here and here and the second part for nous and vous okay but i took this special verb prendre to take on purpose because i thought that it was quite difficult so you know now you can see the way to make it and after that well first we'll see back again one more time the ending so a uh, a uh, s a uh, E O N S E O Z E N T. All right. But then now we'll see the verbs from the first group. So regular groups ending with a R. After that, we'll see the second group, regular group ending, verbs ending with E R. Remember, not all the E R verbs, but still. After that, we'll see verbs from the third group. After that, we'll see irregular group, uh, irregular verbs. And then finally, we'll finish with être and avoir. Okay, so let's see now the first group. And you will see that it's quite easy because we get que je parle, que tu parles, qu'il parle, qu'elle parle, que nous parlions, que vous parliez, qu'il parle, qu'elle parle. All right, this is the subjonctif. And it's quite interesting because if you take the time to look at it, Que je parle, it's exactly the same form as the present form. Que tu parles, same thing. Qu'il parle, qu'elle parle, exactly the same thing as the present form. And then, qu'il parle, qu'elle parle, same. It's like, your, like the present form. Que nous parlions and que vous parliez, it's exactly the same thing as the imparfait. All right? So, normally, and that's the thing, if you watched all the videos especially the video concerning the present tense and the imparfait well you know this subjunctive form already let's take an, a second verb que j'écoute que tu écoutes qu'il écoute qu'elle écoute que nous écoutions que vous écoutiez qu'ils écoutent qu'elles écoutent and it is exactly the same thing this is like the present like the present like the present and like the present. This is like the imparfait, and this is like the imparfait. Okay? Parler is to speak or to talk, écouter, to listen. All right? So now let's see how it goes for the second group. All right? So second group, I took the classic example, finir, to finish or to end. Que je finisse, que tu finisses, qu'il finisse, qu'elle finisse, que nous finissions, que vous finissiez, Qu'il finisse, qu'elle finisse. Okay, so you can see that, well, you've got the endings, E, E, S, E, O, N, E, O, N, S, sorry, E, O, Z, E, N, T. All right. And then, que je choisisse, que tu choisisses, qu'il choisisse, 
qu'elles choisissent, que nous choisissions, que vous choisissiez, qu'ils choisissent, qu'elles choisissent. All right? So the good thing is that for the second group of verbs, well, basically, you don't have any difference, any major difference between the je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, and il, elle. You've got the same first part, okay? You just need to put the endings after. All right? So, third group now, and I took the verb partir, que je parte, que tu partes, qu'il parte, qu'elle parte. Que nous partions, que vous partiez, qu'ils partent, qu'elles partent. Same thing here. Not really difficult because anyway, it is exactly the same form. You just need to add at the end the endings. Part, part, part. Partions, partiez, part. Let's take another example. The verb mettre, to put, que je mette, que tu mettes, qu'ils mettent, qu'elles mettent, que nous mettions, que vous mettiez, qu'il mette, qu'elle mette. So you can see that for these verbs, it's exactly the same thing. So actually, the first part will stay the same. You just need to put the endings according to what we saw previously. So E, E, S, E, I, O, N, S, I, E, Z, E, N, T. Okay, but then of course, we've got some irregular verbs because we're talking about French language. So Let's start now. And so the verb faire, to do, will become que je fasse. Okay? So here you've got the ending. And so it does mean that this first part will stay the same. You just need to change the endings. Que tu fasses e s, qu'il fasse e, etc., etc. All right? Savoir will give you que je sache. Okay, same thing here, E uh, is here, but then of course you will take it away and after that you will put the endings that we saw, E, uh, S, E, uh, E, O, N, S, E, E, Z, E, uh, N, T, according to the person, of course. And then pouvoir, uh, can, will give you que je puisse, exactly the same thing here, you take the E uh, away and then you put the endings according to the person. Okay, so remember, faire, uh, sorry, faire, <laughs> to do, que je fasse, savoir, to know, que je sache, pouvoir, can, que je puisse. All right? And then, well, of course, as I did put that, I forgot that. Ending E, E, S, E, I, O, N, S, I, O, Z, E, N, T. Of course, we've got some more tricky verbs and aller is usually one of them aller means to go have a look que j'aille que tu ailles qu'il aille qu'elle aille que nous allions que vous alliez qu'ils aillent qu'elles aillent okay sorry i did forget the feminine form here um, okay so que j'aille listen to me aille okay que tu ailles Qu'il aille, qu'elle aille, que nous, and that's the difference here, allions, allions, okay, que vous alliez, okay, I don't make the liaison just for you to listen carefully, alliez, okay, so if you want to make the liaison, que vous alliez, okay, and then qu'ils aillent, and the feminine form, qu'elles aillent, all right, and so the other tricky verb is vouloir, want, Que je veuille, que tu veuilles, qu'il veuille, qu'elle veuille, que nous voulions, que vous vouliez, qu'il veuille, qu'elle veuille. All right. Same thing here. We'll have a quite important difference between the je, tu, il, il, and nous, vous. Okay. Que je veuille, que tu veuilles, qu'il veuille, qu'elle veuille, que nous voulions, que vous Vouliez qu'il veuille qu'elle veuille. And of course, we'll finish with être and avoir because they are usually quite tricky. Être, so to be, will give you at the subjonctif que je sois, que tu sois, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit, que nous soyons, que vous soyez, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit. Okay, so as usual, good news is that. Soit, 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 and then soit here. 
you write them differently, but then you pronounce them the same way. Okay, and then soyons here for nous, soyez for vous. So I repeat, que je sois, que tu sois, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit, que nous soyons, que vous soyez, qu'il soit, qu'elle soit. And last but not least, avoir, to have, que j'ai, que tu es, qu'il est, qu'elle est, que nous ayons, que vous ayez, qu'ils aient, qu'elles aient. All right, so same thing here, est, 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 and est. Phonetically the same, but try to remember how to write them, okay? And then, ayons, ayez. So let's read them one more time. Que j'ai, que tu es, qu'il est, qu'elle est, que nous ayons, que vous ayez, qu'ils aient, qu'elles aient.